And we say good evening to you from Craig McCord Field at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rotten with you. Week number nine of the high school football season. A uh, breezy and brisk homecoming night here at Ayersville High School in a matchup of the Green Meadows Conference tonight between the Pilots and the Wayne Trace Raiders. Good evening and welcome to our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show here tonight as uh, we are uh, set for what should be a great matchup here in the Green Meadows Conference as, well, now we've got uh, three teams tied atop the conference standings, one of them being the Ayersville Pilots. Pilots. Yeah, wild uh, in the GMC as always. You get down to the last few weeks of the season, seems to be almost every year, and you got a bunch of teams still involved, still in the mix. So you get to see Ayersville tonight playing a really tough Wayne Trace team, looking to get a big win and start to finish the season strong. Ayersville uh, comes in with a record of 6-2, and 4-1 and one in the Green Meadows Conference. Big win over Antwerp last Friday night. We'll talk about that. We'll preview these two teams. We'll hear from the coaches and more. That's all to come on our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show live from Ayersville High School on DCTV Sports. And we welcome you back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brett Rotten with you on week number nine of the high school football season. Our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show rolls on here from Ayersville. Uh, the Pilots come in with a record of 6-2, and 4-1 and one in the Green Meadows Conference for second-year head coach uh, uh, Andrew Mickey, who comes in with a career record of 13-6. and six. They're coming off a big, big win last Friday night. Huge. They go on the road and knock off previously unbeaten Antwerp. Yeah, and, and what some might call an upset, maybe this Ayersville fan base and Ayersville team might not think so, but played a very, very good Antwerp team. W what many of us thought was going to be the uh, lead dog here in the GMC, able to knock them off and kind of gain that some momentum back from their loss the previous week at Tenora. Well, that now puts three teams atop the Green Meadows Conference at 4-1. and one. Uh, Some say, you know, is... Are Ayersville and Tenora maybe a little bit underrated? Was Antwerp a little overrated based on competition and things like that? Uh, you know, you get through that gauntlet part of the season. Uh, but nonetheless, it's all working itself out here, four and one, three-way tie. Yeah, it definitely is. Always good to have competitiveness. We talk about it a lot. We love that parity. <laughs> and you get it at the top end here with Antwerp, um, obviously with Ayersville and with Tenora. So it's nice to see going into this week you get big games still remaining on the schedule. And with Ayersville out here, We've, we've been here for both their losses, I, I th you know, thinking about that. So we're hoping we're not the bad luck charms, but that we look take on a really, really good Wayne Trace team tonight. Well, uh, last Friday uh, at Antwerp, uh, they were led with a monster, monster running game last Friday night. 323 yards on the ground. Torin can even 198 of those 323. He's the league leader now in yep. the Green Meadows Conference. Sure uh, just shy of 1,000 yards. He needs... Uh, by my count, 17 right. yards. Uh, but we've seen it before in those two games that we play. We're here when the Ayersville played, uh, Tenora and Bluffton. The name of the game with the Pilots is running the football, and that's their strong suit, and they're going to stick to it. And when you have good matchups, especially last week against Antwerp, a team that gives up a little bit to the run, it's going to play in their favor. They look every game to set the tone with the running game, play off of it a little bit with a passing game. They're not over the top aggressive in throwing the football. But when you have strong running backs like Torian Knieven, Garrett McConnell, they've got some depth there. They've got some ability to move the ball and move the ball with ease. And uh, you can't forget about Abe Delano as well. Yeah. I mean, he had a monster game last week as well. Two touchdowns, just shy of 100 yards at 92. Uh, he is that kind of, I don't want to say X factor, if you will, but he's the piece of the puzzle when you look at Ayersville. You have to know where he's at on the field. You absolutely do. He, he's a tight end. He's a little bit of a wide receiver. He's a little bit of a direct snap tailback at times. They use Abe Delano in many ways. The reason he's a tremendous athlete, he's a big, strong, fast kid, and somebody that no matter what, Coach Mickey's going to try to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. We see him featured almost every game in some form. Sometimes it's a trick play. Sometimes it's a little fun gadget thing. Sometimes it's just going out there and getting six or seven balls and moving the chains down the field. Well, he's a big factor on this defense as well. Huge. It's a team. Uh, I, I don't have it written down, but Antwerp held to negative rushing yards, and I assume a lot of that has to do with some of the sack yardage and yep. things like that, but uh, held to negative yardage yards this defense uh, you know we saw him again ag ag the Bluffton game throw that out a little bit right. we saw him against Tenora uh, they really did a nice job for the most part in that entire game uh, you know 
bottling up what Tenora was trying to do. Uh, unfortunately, they came out on the short end of that one. Right. And you get strong teams, and when they play, you know, they play well. On the defensive side for Ayersville, it's been a strong suit this year. And you look at what they did last week against Antwerp. Antwerp hasn't trailed a whole lot at all this year and really hasn't had that many very close games. So probably a little bit of an unfamiliar situation, leading Antwerp, who's great at throwing the ball, to continue to do that. But the Ayersville defense was able to counter that, get big stops when they needed them, pull out a big victory, and put themselves right in position to win the league title. It's the 48th meeting between these two teams. Ayersville leads the overall series 40, or excuse me, 28 to 19. Yep. However, Wayne Trace has won five of the last six. Right. And uh, that's a monkey that the Pilots would like to get off their backs here tonight. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a really good Wayne Trace team. We've seen them now a couple times. And, and looking at Wayne Trace, we know they're strong, they're athletic. It's going to be a tough test for Ayersville tonight. Records are pretty close, but you kind of throw them out the window no matter when they play. Ayersville's Especially a, in Week 9. Yeah, in Week 9, Wayne Trace has been a program. Ayersville's been a program in the last few years. They've been very consistent, always good. Well, uh, congratulations as well. Homecoming night here tonight. Brady Clark uh, and Taylor Kraft, your homecoming yep. royalty, the king and queen here. So congratulations to those young people on their uh, victories here tonight. Sure. And uh, you can see the, uh, the homecoming yeah. court's been walking by us here. They're going to find warmer clothes, yeah, I can they, tell you that. They definitely are. Not exactly <laughs> the perfect night to wear dresses out on the field. All right. Uh, it's week number nine. Wayne Trace and Ayersville. Our Estill Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show rolls on next. We'll start to break down the Wayne Trace Raiders. More to come here on DC TV Sports. And we welcome you back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Week number nine, we're getting you ready. Uh, Wayne Trace in town to take on the Pilots. And the Raiders come in with a record of four and four, three and two in the Green Meadows Conference for third-year head coach Matt Holden, who uh, has a career record of 13 and 16. They won last Friday a come-from-behind win uh, against Fairview coming off two losses at Tenora. We saw that game, yeah. and then uh, the week before, or the week after that, they were at Antwerp, not able to keep up with uh, the Archers, but a close one there, 30-27. to 27. Right. Uh, this is a team that 4-4, four and four, I, I think you have to really question, uh, is this a 4-4 four and four team, or is this a, a team that's a, a handful of points away from being in that 6-2 and two mark? Yeah, it definitely is. The, the times we've seen Wayne Trace this year, they're close in every game. They seem to play to their opponent's level. In, some, in so many ways, that's a good thing. When you match up against good teams, Antwerp, Tenora, they played some of their best ball of the season. Sure. Didn't necessarily pull out victories, but played really good football. They're a dynamic athletic team, somebody that's going to be a major test for Ayersville tonight. And if Wayne Trace plays their game, they're able to move the ball up and down the field like they're, they're capable of doing, it's, we're going to have a fun night. We could be in, in for a little bit of a shootout, I have, I have a feeling. Well, uh, Tucker Antoine, one of those guys you lo look for uh, at Wayne Trace, uh, he's not super high on the rushing as, yep. as far as the rushing side of things go, uh, but uh, he's the number three scorer in the in the Green Meadows Conference, uh, and he finds ways to get in the end zone. I mean, it's the, whether it's running the football, catching yep. it out of the backfield, whatever it is that Tucker Antoine's doing. He's a guy, if you're looking at this Wayne Trace offense, they've got a lot of weapons, but number two is one of those guys you need to understand where he's going to be at on the football field. Yeah, s similar to that of a, of a possession-type running back. You're not looking at him necessarily to break the big one every time. They've got those playmakers at quarterback, at wide receiver. They love to utilize the passing game to get the ball down the field. But when they get down into that red zone, get into that short yardage situation, He's getting the carries. He's getting the important two to three yards, oftentimes punching it into the end zone. Kyle Stoller, uh, you know, we, we had a front row seat to yeah. throw him uh, throwing the football at Tenora a couple of weeks ago. Right. Uh, 1,300, over 1,300 yards this season. He throws at about 60%. I know Coach Holden would probably love to see that go up a little bit yeah. as far as completion percentage, uh, but he's a kid that throws a really nice football, and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, it's not a bias, and it's not seeing the full spectrum of everybody in the league, but from what we've seen, I think he looks like one of the most dynamic players in the GMC. Can control a game, can take it over and win a game. He's really big for a quarterback, but he moves really well. So his ability to throw the ball, to see the entire field, and has no problem utilizing his legs when he needs to. He's a dual threat guy out there. He's a veteran. He's experienced. And if he's on the field, the opponent's going to be a little bit at risk every time he has the ball in his, in his hands. Well, I had an opportunity to talk to Matt Holden. We uh, mentioned the uh, matchup with the uh, 
uh, uh, the uh, past few weeks, sure. the, the, the game last Friday night against Fairview and the matchup tonight against Ayersville as it went one-on-one -on -one with, uh, Ayers or with, excuse me, Wayne Trace head coach Matt Holden. Well, Coach, last week, uh, win over Fairview, come from behind win. Talk about the effort of your players last Friday night against Fairview. Yeah, just a great example of kids that um, didn't get up, didn't give up and didn't get rattled um, through a little bit of adversity. You know, the weather was a little bit crazy and um, kind of some things. They did some things that were a little different than what we expected, uh, but the kids rattled behind each other and, uh, you know, got the win. So very proud of them for that. Well, you know, you, you really you like seeing that. This is a team that's been battling uh, the, the the loss at Tenora, and, of course, you battled Antwerp really strong. Talk about what these kids are doing right now to, to you know, make progress from the beginning of the season and now where they're at playing uh, some really good football right now. You know, they're just kind of continuing to try and um, hone their craft a little bit. Uh, we still have some mistakes that happen um, up front and even with receivers blocking and then defensively not getting the right run fits. And so that's just been the story all year long is just get better at those things, get better at doing what we do, and then the rest will take care of itself. We don't have to worry about what, you know, the other team is going to do as long as we do what we do well. So, you know, the kids have just been trying to really improve in that area, and I think that you've seen that throughout the year. Uh, been close on a few occasions, and hopefully we can continue out with uh, you know, those close ones pulling out more wins. Well, you're in a, a tough region in uh, region number 22. You got a couple of big games coming up. What are uh, a couple of uh, you know things that uh, you want these kids to to really focus on to close out the season? Well, we've been talking about it since the Antwerp game. Um, we just got to focus on going one and zero every week, doing whatever it takes to get that win on that Friday night. And so that's what we've been focused on. And you know, hopefully, doing that, we can still achieve our goal of going to the the postseason, and then hopefully being able to make a little bit of a run there. So just going 1-0 every week, that's the key to that. Well, you know, and, and a lot of that, uh, you know, you talk about X's and O's and executing, but a lot of that uh, is kind of that mental game. Uh, you're still talking about teenage boys here that are that are competing at a, a high level every Friday night. Uh, how, do you, how do you go at them on that side of, the, of things? Yeah, definitely something to be mindful of, and, and we try to respect that. You know, they're, they're high school kids and try not to make it too tough on them, but – as far as their mentals, it, it's really been really good this year. There are definite times where they could have been down and kind of been, all right, well, this season's done, even though it really wasn't, and never gotten that uh, feeling from any of the guys. So I think that that's just a product of having older guys on our team. We got 16 seniors and about that number of juniors. So, you know, they know that it's kind of coming to an end and we got to do uh, whatever it takes to get it done so they can't afford to be down on themselves or – um, take it lightly any given week. So, yeah, I think that we've definitely seen that and the really strong mentals from those seniors. Well, you know, and, and having those upperclassmen, uh, you know, the leadership, not necessarily on the field, but off the field, in the locker room, at practice, in the hallways at school, uh, you know, that having a, that large number of seniors is, is huge for any high school team. Yeah, and I think one thing that it's done too is there's so many seniors and there's a lot of guys that are seeing that there's different ways to contribute to the team. With the numbers that we have, I mean, not even all of our seniors get to play regularly, but they have a meaningful impact uh, no matter what their role is. And like you said, some of the off-the-field stuff, some of our guys are really, really good at community service and we preach that and guys see, hey, I can do that. That's something I can do and contribute and still be part of the team. And so I, I think that that's helped us continue to get our numbers up and I put that fully on the kids they do a great job well uh, this uh, Friday night uh, uh, you're on the road at Ayersville this uh, a pilots team that has had their f fair share ups and downs what do you know about Ayersville um you know I think uh, I could be wrong here but I think that they returned most if not all of their offensive line and, and their guys in the trenches there and they're big. Uh, they're big and they're physical and they like to play that physical brand of football. So we're definitely going to be mindful of that and, and be ready to, you know, throw some punches back tomorrow um, to be able to stay with that physicality and put our put ourselves in a position to, you know, come away with a W at the end. Excellent. X's and O's wise, what are a couple of keys for uh, you guys to, to get the win over Ayersville? I think offensively, we really got to make sure that we take care of the football um, you know, with their style of offense, they like to run it more than throw it. Uh, if we let them continue to have long extended drives, um, that limits our possessions. And so the, the possessions that we do get, we're going to have to make them count. Um, we can't be giving the football away. And then defensively, it's the exact opposite of that. we got to get them off the field. 
and we can't let them have those long sustained drives and we got to give our offense a chance to score some points well matt i appreciate you taking a few minutes to uh, chat with us best of luck here against ayersville yep thank you i appreciate it. Comments of Wayne Trace head coach Matt Holden and uh, Brett, you hear it. They've got to clean up some mistakes and really just uh, you, you think if they can do some of that, they probably are a little bit better than four and four right now in, right. with their record. Yeah, a, a team that does make some mistakes. They're, they're looking to get a little bit better as the season goes on. They made some strides. But like we said a little bit earlier, they tend to play their best ball against good teams. They're going to be facing Ayersville tonight. And if they can lock in on penalties and clean up the turnovers, you know, they're going to be in position to have an extra possession, to have an extra first down or two, which could be the difference in a close game today. Well, let's take our final time out on our Estill Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show when we come back. National Anthem starting lineups. Uh, we'll talk a, a little bit about some playoff seating here tonight sure. as well. As we roll on here from Ayersville High School, it's week number nine of the high school football season. Wayne Trace and Ayersville on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to our Estill Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Routon with you week number nine of the high school football season as we get you set for what should be a great matchup here tonight between these two teams. And, well, Brent, if you're talking about playoff points, uh, obviously at this point you know a head coach is going to tell you, well, we're not really looking at it. Sure. Some of them don't shy away from it. Others sure. do. But the reality is if they're not watching, an assistant coach is watching or their stat guys, they got somebody watching and calculating points. And, and uh, right now, Ayersville, for the Pilots, they're ninth in yeah. Division 7, Region 26. Now, remember, uh, OHSA went to a 16-team playoff. Yep. So the top 16 will get in. The top eight will host a playoff game. If you look at that, they're sitting at nine right now. They are uh, just a, a smidge away from having a, a, a week number 11 game right here at, at uh, Craig McCord Field. A win tonight. Yeah, Big for them. Flip it over. Wayne Trace, they're on the outside looking in right now. Right. 17th in Division 6, Region 22, which Region 22 is a tough, tough region. Very hard. But uh, a win here tonight over a good Six and two, or uh, Ayersville team would really catapult them, you would think, into that top 16. Yeah, if you look at tonight's game, and you kind of laid it out there, really, uh, the a little bit elongated version, but it's really simple. If Wayne Trace wins tonight, they're about they're going to lock in at least a good shot at a playoff um, game. If if Ayersville goes out and wins tonight, they're really going to lock in a good shot at a home game in the playoffs. Sure. So still got both, another week. It's still got another week, but both teams are playing for something tonight. This is the last chance to get some major points for both teams, and we talk about those points all the time. You want to beat the teams with four, five, six, seven wins. You know that sure you want to beat the teams with one or two wins. You just don't get the push from them like you get this late in the year from a really good team who's played some really tough teams. Well, let's talk about non-conference as well. When you look at the Green Meadows Conference, an eight-team uh, uh, yep. conference, so you're going to get uh, three get games, the three games. In, in the uh, in the uh, non-league matchups, and this is where those games really Huge. start to get important. Important because you're looking at second and third level points now, right? And the let's be realistic here the green meadows conference not a great out of conference record this nope. year and and so now you got to take care of business and hope for a little help yeah and the green meadows conference does a lot of matching up out of conference with the nwoal and we know sure. how great that league is and even if you don't win those games you get that little benefit of playing really tough teams which prepare you as you go throughout the year but when you're able to knock off any of those teams playing you know a slight a division up two divisions up in some sure. cases you can pull some serious points you you like it early in the year you see a little bit of it but it really starts to show out now well let's uh, take a look at some other matchups tonight in the green meadows conference uh, obviously this game here is a big one uh antwerp is on the road at paulding tonight that's a yeah, much improved yeah. paulding squad uh tenora is at edgerton and fairview home with hicksville I think you got some solid matchups uh tonight in the green meadows conference yeah you really do the one we're you know probably we're probably highlighting the better game when you're looking at the the implications going forward here tonight but you look at Paulding Antwerp. Antwerp's going to try to rebound off that loss. Paulding's sure. been better. Started off really well this year. Hit the skids a little bit. But then you have Tenora over there. Don't want to get caught in that trap by Edgerton. Sure. They haven't had a good year. But if you stumble right now, you're in a position where you do have to play pretty perfect in terms of the win-loss column. Or you're going to set yourself way behind the eight ball. 
Well, in the uh, Western Buckeye League tonight, Defiance Bulldogs have a huge game tonight <laughs> a big game. Uh, on the road at Salina. Uh, I did some math on this. If they can beat Salina here tonight, and I think and Wapakoneta loses tonight. Yeah, it's and then Salina beats Wapakoneta next week, or Wapakoneta beats Salina, Salina next, next week. week. They can we win. get a three-way tie. Yeah, of the <laughs> yeah it's, it, it, it's weird. I did the same thing today, looking at it, and I said it is possible. We'll know tonight if it's even sure. remotely close to relevant. But you know, Defiance tonight is winning. They absolutely need to win tonight. It secures so much for them. They're going to be taking on Ottawa Glandorf next week. Not a lot of opportunity to get much help there. So tonight is their last night to get a really good chance to beat a really good team. Most would probably say the best team in the WBL playing tonight in Salina and one of the other best in Defiance. And the WBL has been, if you want to talk awesome about parity this year, this year awesome it's, it's been year. great. Uh, NWOAL, probably the highlight game there tonight yep. is in Archbold. Uh, Blue Streaks are uh, hosting Patrick Henry. Yep. That's a big matchup over there. Napoleon's at Bo uh, Bowling Green. That's always a big matchup. When you talk about Defiance, that's a point game. That big they, time points. They need They're some points Napoleon, there, too, no for doubt. sure. Rooting for Napoleon for Defiance. Our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show tonight. Uh, thanks to Bob Estel and the crew on North Clinton Street in Defiance. Make sure you see Bob and the entire gang. Nobody beats an Estel deal. You've got Bob's word on it here tonight. Well, it's uh, almost time for kickoff. A uh, chilly. I think we've finally got our first taste of real fall yeah, weather. We hit, we hit week nine weather in week nine. It's the first one that's really matched up. We've been lucky this year <laughs> with uh, really good weather, but tonight, Eh, it's one of those nights. And Will finally looks uh, in his element with yeah. uh, the Will, Will's attire every week. If you guys don't know Will, you're doing all right. Uh, sweatpants, stocking hat, <laughs> jean jacket, just solid look. You know what? My, my brother is relaxed. All right, let's talk keys to the game here tonight. Ayersville, yeah. what do they have to do here to get the win? It, it's control the run game. They're not going to wow you through the air. So get out there, run the football, um, you get three to five yards per carry on average. And obviously when you're running the football, Keep it in your hands. Don't put it on the sure. ground. Uh, from the other side, for Wayne Trace, uh, I would think maybe the mistake here is going to be eliminate some mistakes. Yeah, eliminating those mistakes, it kind of goes without saying. I think every coach will say every game, if we win the turnover battle, we got a good shot to win. Um, for them, it's maybe with a little bit of, of an exclamation point behind it. They need to win that turnover battle. Sure. And if they can also, at the same time, if their defensive line can shut down that Ayersville run, they could be in control most of the night. Well, it's... Uh, Homecoming, it's always all fun. kinds of good stuff. Yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> uh, how much is the weather going to play a factor in here tonight? We talk a little bit about week nine weather. Right now, it's just cold and breezy. Yeah. There's forecasted for some rain, maybe halftime ish or so. Yeah. Yep. Um, if, if you if you look at uh, how each team plays, leaning a little heavily on the passing game for Wayne Trace. If you get a little more wind and definitely some rain, that could really come into play tends to favor the teams on the ground when it gets sure. sloppy. So, And let's it, think about this, too, natural grass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we get so caught up anymore in turf and, and all those things. Uh, you've mud. Got a, you, we get got, mud tonight. you, you got mud. Parents yeah. are going to have a lot extra work cleaning up yep, the, no the uh, uniforms tomorrow. But, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this weather really does factor in because you got a run team, you got a run-heavy team, a pass-heavy team. Not that, not that excuse no. me, not that uh, Wayne Trace can't run the football. No, they're, they're but, but, very healthy there, yeah. But the, the bread and butter of that is, is using kind St Stoller through the air. Absolutely. And if the weather does play into that, you could see some adjustments made by Ayersville. You could see some adjustments made by the Wayne Trace offense. But we're talking halftime. We're talking early second sure. half. If we get a little bit of delay, we may not have any effect at all. So something to keep an eye for. You start seeing a little dribbles on the TV, a little sprinkle here, a little sprinkle there, and it starts to get a little heavy. Watch and see how both teams adjust to each other on offense and defense. I want to say a big thanks to, uh, we usually do this at the end of the broadcast, Rafael Manriquez, yeah, the, the AD and the staff out here at Ayersville. Um, for those of you who have never seen a live setup for us, uh -huh. it's um, <laughs> it, it's not exactly the easiest thing no. in the world, and our production team did a great job. We're actually uh, kind of huddled up underneath the uh, yeah. the stands here. we got a little canopy to keep We're us soft. out of. We're soft. <laughs> well, I said I melt. Uh, <laughs> this is what I prefer. But, uh, no, it, it, it's a great opportunity here to, to recognize these guys for yeah. really stepping up and giving us the opportunity to get a, a spot where we can have our setup. So, yep, absolutely. Well, we're going to set. Uh, we're going to be heading over to the uh, field now as we get the Airsville Marching Band with our Defiance Elks 147 National Anthem. Here's the Airsville High School Marching Band.
And we're ready to get things underway here at beautiful Craig McCord Field. Harrisville has won the toss. They have selected to defer. Game time temperature, 59 degrees. Wind at 13 miles an hour, east-northeast, east, with wind gusts up to 22 miles an hour. And the humidity is 61%. It's a We've great had night for football games here this season. Good luck to both uh, this is uh, probably one of those matchups that may be one of the most balanced matchups we've seen all season. Definitely is. Weaknesses for one team, st strong sets, you know, don't match exactly here. And those games sometimes are a lot of fun to see. A team that likes to move the ball through, through the air versus a team that likes to move the ball on the ground and how they're going to counteract each other. It's going to affect the clock control. It's going to affect a lot of different things. So it's going to make for a fun time tonight. And uh, hopefully we see a good close game. Sometimes we get disappointed. Tonight I think we'll be on to a good one. Well, uh, we're getting ready for our opening kickoff tonight. Our opening kickoff is uh, made possible by F&M Bank. And uh, we'll uh, be seeing uh, this Wayne Trace offense for the first time here, or uh, first here tonight, uh, the way it sounds, or the way it looks as uh, the teams are sitting out there to line up. It's going to be a fun one for sure. Definitely one we've looked forward to now for a couple weeks after seeing Wayne Trace earlier in this year play Tenora. And then right, up, right behind that scene, Ayersville and Tenora, you get a really good gauge for these two teams. Very evenly matched. Abe Delano will be uh, kicking this off for the Pilots as we are set to get underway here from uh, Ayersville High School. We'll get you your starting lineups here in just a minute. But uh, week number nine of the high school football season, the Pilots will boot it away here. And it's our F&M Bank opening kickoff. It'll be taken by Wayne Trace at the 10-yard line. He'll come out across the 20 near the 25, find some space down that sideline, and he'll be popped out of bounds. And Torin can even puts the lick on him there. A nice starting field position here on this first series for the Ayersville Pilots. Anytime you can get out there and get, a, you know, across the 20, across the 25, you're in a good spot to start. So they'll have first down and 10 for this Wayne Trace Raider offense led by, we'll get our... Uh, Baker Schindler starting lineups here for uh, Wayne Trace. Kyle Stoller is the man under center, or I should say in shotgun formation. Yep. Uh, but another guy to look for, Tucker Antoine, the big senior running back, is uh, another face that you're going to have to watch here tonight. Our Baker Schindler starting lineups here tonight. They'll start at their own 30-yard line, first down and 10. Stoller will throw one out to the far sideline. It'll go in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. He was looking for Brady Miller. And a, uh, oh, Brent, we saw that uh, against uh, Tenora. They use that Love little, that. little, little bubble. bubble screen type of thing. It's almost an extension of the run for this team. Yeah, it really is. Usually safe throws. That one got away a little bit there. You can get to a little bit of a danger zone when you get those tipped up high because they hang in the air a little bit. Nothing, no, nothing of harm there for Wayne Trace to start off. So second down and 10. Stoller in shotgun formation will have a single back to his right. And he's going to look to throw again. And all kinds of time pressure finally coming. It'll find the uh, running back, uh, Caleb Antoine. Or excuse me, I did that. <laughs> we, know, we know Caleb. <laughs> I did Ayersville that before. Guy. Ayersville guy. A uh, Tucker Antoine, excuse <laughs> me. And he'll go all the way down into Ayersville territory at the 46-yard line and give him a gain of 24 yards and a first down for the Wayne Trace Raiders. Yeah, I definitely might be doing that one as well tonight, so we'll let it slide. Good pass play, you know, incomplete on the first one, get a chance to get the ball downfield, a pretty simple throw too. Turns into a pretty marginal gain for him. So first down and 10, first time tonight in the Ayersville territory. And uh, it'll be first down here for the Raiders. He's gone. And it will be hit in the backfield as they were trying to go Tucker, or Tucker Antoine on that left side and just nowhere to go. Heck, heck of a penetration there from the Ayersville uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. front seven. <laughs> Man, some papers flying back here having a good time. It's not windy or anything, so uh, definitely good penetration there to get a big loss uh, for the Ayersville defense. So they'll lose five back to the 49 of Wayne Trace. And... See what the Raiders can do here. And it'll be Antoine to his left once again. He'll get back across the line of scrimmage and looks like he's going to gain maybe six or seven. 
was able to get some of that lost uh, yardage back. Definitely gained, yeah, you're right, Josh. Looked like gained about seven, eight there. So good gain setting you up for a third and manageable, about third and seven here. Quickly to the line, they'll use some tempo here. And they'll give it to Antoine again. He'll come right side this time. Out near the 40, he's got space. He trips a little bit. Now 35-30, he's got room to go. Down near the 20-yard line, it'll be good enough for a Wayne Trace first down. And that's a big run there for Tucker Antoine. Yeah, definitely was able to get inside the red zone there, getting down to about the 18, eh, maybe right at the 20-yard line. But a big time, we ah, take it all back. We do have a penalty. So our first penalty of the night will be against the Raiders of Wayne Trace. That's going to not only wipe off a big game there, Brent, but yeah. it's also going to take that first down off the board. Yeah, yeah, it negates the huge run, getting it down into the red zone, but at the same time, you know, puts you back in third and long now, an obvious passing down for Wayne Trace, and really what they're good at. You get a block in the back there, not our traditional hold that we're used to just calling out every time we see a flag there. So, But you had a block in the back, negates the big run. Down is third. So we'll see that's going to back them all the way up. I thought that was a pre. Oh, they spotted it from the. F oh, no, excuse me. I, that's a, not. It's a spot. The back, yep, yeah. That's a spot. That one's yep. still a spot file. There's not so, many left, but that is one. <laughs> so it'll be third down and 11 now at the 47-yard line. All kinds of pressure coming as Ayersville brings a blitz. And Stoller, I think, uh, kind of off his back foot there, Brent. And it, he had a uh, open receiver in Jude Stoller, but... Pass was a little to the right. Stoller was cutting back to the inside. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. Don't Couldn't quite tell if maybe there was possibly a fingertip on it. Maybe not. Rushed the play a little bit, but at the same time, pretty decent throw. A little bit behind the receiver. So Wayne Trace will be forced to punt on. Uh, this is playing a little field position here. Will be Wayne Trace as Kyle Stoller is the punter. And that was nearly blocked. Great kick. It'll go off the side of his foot. We'll see we'll where see they. See where the spot comes. I made a spot. There's the soon. official. He's right gonna at walk, the 20. He's yeah. going to walk it back. He's going to walk it back. 20. 25 yard okay, line. Okay, all right. Pretty good kick. Flipped the field pretty much. Started at their own 30. Putting Ayersville at their own 25. So the pilots will come onto the field for the first time tonight as we take a look at our Baker and Schindler starting lineups for the pilots. And they'll be led by their senior quarterback. Uh, Lucas Fishpaul, and the guys that you need to look out for, number 44, junior running back Torian Knieven, and who is the uh, league leader in the Green Meadows Conference with uh, almost 1,000 yards. Yep. Needs 17. Keep a track of that, yep, Brent. We'll, we'll likely be over that tonight. And number 19, Abe Delano, another senior on this team. Those are two guys you have to know where they're at on this football field if you're the Wayne Trace defense. On every play, definitely. First down at 10 at the 25, and it will be Delano on a little end around. And, uh, well, he slipped already. Yeah. And if you're looking at uh, field position here, Brent, uh, that is not something you like to see, uh, somebody slipping on uh, first down. No, definitely not. We talked in the pregame, too, a lot about, about how getting the ball in Abe Delano's hands is always something you look to do. We see it on the first play, a handoff to Abe Delano. Got three. Again, slipped and fell, so potential to get a little bit more. So Delano will have it on first down. Shotgun formation now for the Pilots, and it'll be Kneeven with it across the 30. He lowers the shoulder at the 35. He's going to have enough for an Ayersville first down. And, boy, just a big, strong runner, very athletic. And at the end of that, Brent, he just kind of lowered his shoulder a little bit and <laughs> get out of the way. Sneaky speed, really. When you watch him run, he doesn't look like he's moving that quickly. But, man, he gets yardage quick, takes long strides, and, like you said, loves to get hit, so finishes off every run getting a couple extra yards on the back end, 10 on that carry. Out to the 38-yard line. It's first down and 10, two backs to the backfield. In shotgun formation is Lucas Fishball. It'll be second man through. That is Delano with it off right tackle. <laughs> Just keeps <laughs> pulling defenders. Just toughness right there. And Big, strong Abe Delano falls forward there, able to pick up solid yardage, gets seven, and... Wasn't the prettiest run in the world, but man, seven yards Tackle looked pretty easy. Two, Tucker, and second and three for your pilot. So gain of seven brings up second down and three. This is uh, definitely ahead of schedule here for the pilots. Yep. Two backs in the backfield, and 
Little misdirection, second man through, pushing the pile, and he'll be, I think, about a little bit short of the first down. Torin Kniven. Looks like he got a yard. Oh, they're going to spot that one all the way, Brent. They're going to spot that one all the way out at the 47 yard okay, line. So right. give him two. Yeah, two solid yards there. No. So here you go. Big third down here for this Ayersville Pilots offense. Uh, eight and a half in minutes and rolling here in our first quarter. This is one of those plays where you got those two big backs back there in Abe Delano and Torin Kniven. That's your bread and butter. That's your ball game. Lucas Fishball can move a little bit with the ball, but you're going to see him handle one of those strong kids. So they'll bring a little pressure here, and it'll be Delano with it. He's into Wayne Trace territory, pulling defenders that. down inside the 45, and Delano will have enough for an Ayersville first down and a nice strong run there. Give him about nine on the carry. Solid run for Delano. They're using a mix. It's almost alternating carries here between the two backs and – and it's something we haven't seen yeah, yeah. previously at, at, at the Ayersville games. Yeah, the couple there. games we've seen, I think you, you tend to see Delano throughout the course of a game get four to six maybe carries. He's sitting on three already, but, you know, you're getting late in the year. Kenevens had a lot of mileage on those tires, and, and maybe they're just a little bit of a break. And when you got a big-time playmaker like Delano, you feel good going to him. Sixth play of this drive here in our opening quarter. First drive for the Pilots, and it'll be Kniven with it across the 40, spun down. A nice open field tackle there by junior Brady safety Brady, Brady, Miller. Five, Brady Miller. Miller. But a nice uh, first down run. I think that Brady's going to have about five or six on that first down run. And it's going to bring him to 17 yards. And that would be 1,000? There you go. Yeah. If he's, he's right there. If, he's right there. If, if our math is correct. Now, if it's our math, well, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. No, it's of probably course. somewhere in the 700s, but no. But uh, <laughs> obviously, you could still go backwards a little sure, bit here. Yeah, but you definitely have that. You don't chalk it up too much, but right. uh, as of right now, uh, heading over that 1,000-yard uh, mark for the season. Second down now and five for the Pilots. The Wayne Trace 39-yard line. They'll throw here tonight, and this will be out to Delano. He'll make a man miss across the 40, and... Excuse me, I thought that was a 19 year. That's You're right, Brent. Johnny on the spot. Ray Wolfram, his first reception of the night. With those uniforms, they're tough to see. You get the, the powder blue and, and the the highlighter yellow, so it can be a little tough to see. 15 and 19 look very similar. Yep, and uh, they crunch, they scrunch up a little bit too with the pads and everything. Yeah, they definitely do. I think that was the first pass of the night for Lucas yep. Fishball. So. One for one, so a couple yards there picked up. That's 100%, Brent. That would be 100%. <laughs> Halfway home in our opening <laughs> quarter here at Ayersville. Scoreless with a third down and three for the Pilots. It'll be Kniven with it, and he'll have enough for the first down. He's got more across the 30, down near the 25-yard line. Kind of tangled up with his own man down there a little bit. But, uh, well, I tell you, Brent, he just he, he, what I like about Torin Kniven, it's nothing flashy. No. Um, he, he'll find the hole, and he's a little bit patient. Finds the hole, and then it's downhill. Yeah, and it's it's going vertical. It's definitely hitting your spot and going. Um, getting positive yards. Again, doesn't look to break the big one. Has the potential to do it, but really looks to find a hole and see where you can get positive yards on every carry. Very efficient runner. So a first down and 10 now for the Ayersville Pilots as they are inside the 30 now at the 27. We've got a penalty marker. Not sure what was going on here. Sideline warning. Yep, uh, sideline warning against Ayersville, so no yards on that this time. No. You get one of those. Yeah. It's your freebie. Freebie. So the we reset, first and 10, 27-yard line, two backs again in the backfield, and it will be Delano with the football off rack tackle, and he'll go down inside the 25, near the 20-yard line, a nice – Solid run. Brett, what I like about what Ayersville is doing on this drive is they are staying ahead of schedule. Uh, and when you're, you're averaging two, three, five yards a carry uh, a play, uh, you're not putting yourself in those third down and six, third down and seven. What we've seen here so far has been a third and one, third and three uh, type of situation for, for Ayersville. Can even at 29 yards on four carries, Delano at 22 yards on four carries. So extremely efficient. They're getting yards, and you look at that right there. There's over 50 yards on the ground. That's looked pretty easy. Tenth play of this drive will be Kniven with it, and he will go inside the 20, and he'll be oh, finally brought down. Kniven with the run. <laughs> by number five. Brady, Brady Miller, Miller with the stop for first down. 
Wayne Trace. And anytime your running back's getting into that safety level, Brent, uh, yep. you know you're kind of on your heels here. For Ayersville, their first trip inside of our Stamball Jewelers red zone here tonight, and they'll have first down and 10 at the 14. Again, <clears throat> again excuse me, solid running, <laughs> getting – uh, you know, solid yards on every carry. They're not having much issue. You look for Arizona to stick right to that game. Keep doing what they know how to do here and punch it in. A little bit of a low snap. It's handled by Fishpaw, and he'll give it to Delano on first down. Delano not on. much there for him. And, you know, no Noah Parity, the junior defensive tackle in there for – he's a big boy. Big boy. 5'10", <laughs> but 250. And you see Abe Delano's a pretty big boy. Get that and just fall right to the ground, running into a brick sure. wall there. So if you're able to, you know, if you're able to get him in front of a ball carrier, he's going down. Gain of one for Delano on first down. So it'll be second and nine. By my math, Brent, I believe they can get a first down at the five yard, four Correct. yard line. Excuse me. Four. Six. Somewhere. They can <laughs> get a five. first down. Pick one. And Fishball will keep it for there the first go. time tonight, and he'll be wrapped up and hit immediately. That's quarterback on quarterback, Kyle Stoller with the stop. Kyle Stoller in the, played a little bit of safety earlier yep. in the season, has moved into a linebacker spot uh, for this uh, Wayne Trace defense. And you tell you what, you look at Fishball, you look at guys like Abe Delano, you look at uh, Tucker Antoine. These are yeah. two-way players. Two-way players that out are, there every play. That they're getting, there, getting in there, uh, you know, at the linebacker spot. Maybe they're out in coverage. Um, Shows a lot about what their athleticism leads to here, and especially, and you see it a lot in smaller schools. Yeah, you get you, their roster, you know, position is, is athlete. It really is. When they play both sides, you got a quarterback playing linebacker. I mean, you know, it tells you he's fast, he's quick, he's big, he's strong. Plays not afraid to hit anybody either. Not afraid to hit anybody, not afraid to chase a tackler down. Big third down here, third and seven, and they'll go to the uh, far sideline. It'll be caught and immediately dropped. I think that was Wolfram. That ball stayed in there. It looked like a good hand, good hand on the ball there by the defender, 23. So good job there, Jordan Lotz, an outside linebacker on coverage out there. And I'll tell you what, nice job by Lotz to recover on that because there was some space out there. Ray Wolfram, and he's an athletic kid. He can Very make some quick. guys miss, and it'll be our fourth, first fourth down now of this football game. Fourth and four, so you look here, and, and you can still get a first down right at about the five-yard line. So you're looking for four yards, but you're inside the 10. You're, you're, you're in position to score on any possession. will be very interesting to see what Ayersville does here. Make sure that chain gang is on the top of their game over there on the far sideline. And I believe we're going to have a timeout. Pilots are going to talk about this one. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. We're going to take it with them. Minute 52 to go in our first quarter. We're still scoreless, but Ayersville is knocking on the door. It's week number nine. Wayne Trace and Ayersville on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rotten with you here. Week number nine of the high school football season, Wayne Trace and Ayersville. And, well, Brent, big fourth down here for the Pilots. And uh, you got to be thinking, if you're Wayne Trace, you're probably thinking, well, we're probably going to see Torian Kniven here. Yeah, you would think uh, Ayersville does like to use the short passing game. It is in play as well. Um, you know, they have athlete there, quarterback who can run with it and throw out the football. you got Delano, you got Kniven. You got Ray Wolfram as well. So you got some players here. So we've got an official timeout here for something. He's, they're sending Kniven over to the sideline. I think maybe he's got a little blood on the arm, and oh, he'll be forced be, to check out. That's a I, big one there. I think they're actually lining up to kick it. It looks like we're going to kick. Yeah, definitely are. So Abe Delano is listed as the kicker here. I don't know, check that. Now yeah, Fishball's going to check back. <laughs> I thought they were landing up to kick, and now they're sending Fishball back out there. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down and four. It's a big play. Huge play here in this first quarter. It will be a pass looking to the far sideline. It'll be tipped and almost in, <laughs> intercepted. Man. You notice, here's a heads-up play here. It didn't catch it. Well, Jude Stoller, yeah. senior's defensive back. That ball was popped up. Do you see him waving yeah. his, yep. his teammates off? Because uh, he knew 
an interception probably works against you a little bit there. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. You know, yeah, you're running with the football. You got a chance to get some field position from where you would get on the spot, but you also have a chance to fumble the ball. You have a chance to end up back near the end zone. So where that oh. ball was tipped, it's a very smart play. Well, and let's be realistic here. In the middle of the field like that, how far are you going yeah. to get uh, on There's a return? No doubt. There's no doubt with every, everybody pushed down and compressed down into that part, into that side of the field. You know, just a very smart, intelligent play. See it tipped in the air. And, you know, we always used to say you see it tipped in the air, hit your hit your defender, hit your, your receivers, but ball fell down. So a first down run here for Tucker Antoine as uh, Wayne Trace will take over on downs. As we are nearing the end of our first quarter and not much there for Antoine. Nice job by the Ayersville defense to swarm him up. I think he's going to maybe get about a yard. Yeah, and you're in position here for Ayersville to have a lengthy drive on offense, you know, but it worked not putting up points here of course not a great thing but at the same time you have them pinned back um you're going to see probably trace obviously came down on first down and ran no matter where they are on the field they are going to be in play to throw the football so be interesting to see here but with your defense pinning them back early if you can get a big stop here you can flip that field right down and be right back into a good spot airsville is going to drop some guys back in coverage they'll bring a late blitz on the left and they'll throw it down that far sideline and he's looking for Number 12, Cole Moorhead. Fishball on coverage there for Ayersville. Moorhead was looking for a flag, but nonetheless. Uh, yeah, look, looked like clean coverage. And, you know, you know, one thing we didn't shout out there, look at that arm. I mean, Stoller didn't feel like he put a lot of juice behind that, threw that right out near, you know, near the 40, near, near midfield. So had some carry on that ball coming out. With the wind a little bit. Yeah. I know we can't yeah, tell helps. too much yeah, here. but. Helps. We're blessed to be in a spot with not a lot of wind here tonight. You love when they're pinned pin this deep back and they take a deep ball. Just take a chance. you got to like the aggressive play. So third down here and nine. got to pick up a first down if you're Wayne Trace or you're punting from your end zone. And Stoller oh, loses out. the football, and it'll be out. And I believe he – yep, it'll be recovered by, Air, by Ayersville. And can even, it looks like, with the football. So – Wow, that's even worse than punting from your end zone. Yeah, right there is. You had uh, Stoller look to break the field to kind of start to get run and ran right into a, an Ayersville defender who was kind of blocked by his blocker and as, as he sidestepped him, um, a little forearm right to the to the gut and knocked the football right out. Well, if you're Ayersville here, you got 55 seconds here in the first quarter and uh, you just kind of got a gift of a minute to rip <laughs> off the, the clock. At and the nine-yard line, right exactly where they lost the ball in their possession. So send the defenders out there for a couple plays and get right back on the field. So right away in our Stamball Jewelers red zone, first down, it'll be Delano with it off right tackle, and he'll go into the end zone. Ayersville will be one play and done. It's a nine-yard touchdown run for Abe Delano. And, uh, well, the pilots strike first. Brent, we talked about mistakes in the, uh, in the pregame show. Yep. First turnover right of the game, obviously at the nine-yard line. Yeah, it, 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 you know, You're kind of be behind points. the A-ball, little ball, but... Yep. but you know, but you saw what you saw there from Delano on that run was you saw Ayersville maybe a little frustrated on offense with not being able to punch it in last time. Just went down, went right to the bread and butter, said we're, we're going to run out on the field, we're going to set good blocks, we're going to open up a big hole for Abe Delano to take two or three steps for, to get nine yards with as big strides as he has, fall right into the end zone. So we've got a conversation now on the far sideline, the referee going over there to talk to him and... Got to give I think, they sent so, I think they sent somebody else over there. I think I think there's some maybe some blood on somebody else. Sure. who's was talking about the arm there. So I know they sent can even off a little bit ago for a little bit of blood. But we'll see here. Got to like coach there uh, with the old shorts still putting them on. It's nice and chilly out here tonight. Not for him. Tough Pilots team. going for two here. Two backs in the backfield with Fish Paul. Man in motion. Second man through and no oh, no oh, right there fooled everybody. Look at that. Can even with the two point uh, conversion run. So. Tremendous run there. So Ayersville takes the early lead here, and uh, it's eight to nothing, with uh, about 50 seconds to go in this first quarter. Here they strike first on this Premier Bank touchdown run by Abe Delano. We'll take a timeout. More to come from Ayersville. It's Wayne Trace and Ayersville. Pilots lead at nine to nothing. More after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rotman with you here on DC TV Sports. Get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, Brent. This is a tough one here. Yeah. Uh, you one, know what? Let's do every play. One play. It was a run. Uh, it went nine yards, and it was a touchdown, a Premier Bank touchdown for Abe Delano, his first of the night. Torin Knieven with a two-point conversion run. Ayersville eight, Wayne Trace zero. Just uh, under a minute here to go in this first quarter. You get that sense of finishing off business for sure for the pilots there, you know, stalled out on the fourth down attempt and then get the opportunity uh, to get the ball right back there. And, you know, hey. you like to see a good veteran team playing strong football right now. Get that second chance, go out there and just finish it right off. And the ensuing kickoff will be a low line drive kick. It'll be fielded at the 10-yard line and just nowhere to go. Tremendous Hudson coverage. Myers on the return for Wayne Trace and great uh, coverage there. Um, great coverage there by the, the Ayersville Special Teams Unit. Yeah, they definitely uh, got down there, covered the kick, and not a lot of space to go. And, you know, it's just you get that momentum from punching it in the end zone. It's starting to bleed over to special teams. We'll see if it leaks in, into the uh, defensive side of the football. But Pilot's playing good football right now. Oh, Trace, Wayne Trace looking to not turn the football over, utilize their strengths on offense, and get the ball down the field. 44 seconds to go, opening quarter. It's first down and 10 at the 29-yard line. Check that 24-yard line. And it'll be a first down handoff. Just like Cole Moorhead. Cole Moorhead. We'll go around the left side and not much there for Moorhead. Brady Clark on the stop for Ayersville, the homecoming, homecoming king, king here tonight. Congratulations to that young man. Pretty good night for Brady Clark. So far. Already. 15 seconds in rolling opening quarter here at Ayersville. And they'll just hand it off inside. Nope, excuse me, Stoller's got it again. And, oh, Ooh, man, he is man. just smoked. Wow. Brady Clark. The initial stop, uh, and then uh, Brady Clark came in to finish. Yeah. And Didn't see, Kyle yeah. Stoller just uh, absolutely got uh, the, lay, the wood laid there. Yeah, definitely did. We played one quarter here at Ayersville. Pilots eight, Wayne Trace zero. Second quarter action next here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to uh, Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rott with you here at uh, Craig McCord Field as uh, the public address announcer is uh, doing his thing, the uh, GMC champion girls golf team here at Ayersville. Yeah, we, you know, great season for the girls golfers here for the pilots and, you know, go out there win the GMC. That's the goal at the beginning of the year and, you know, had There's a couple hole in ones, a couple eagles, a couple albatrosses. Those are double eagles. Those are hole in twos on a par five. Uh, good year for girls golf around here. Yeah, Ava, Ava Hesselschwart uh, from Defiance right. on her way to state. Yeah. So Pretty kind of awesome. a cool thing. And, uh, yeah, just been a good year of uh, girls golf. I've I, golfed with you. I know. It's not pretty. I don't even know what you call what you were doing out there. Right. <laughs> we had fun, though. Yeah, it was a, it was a, you know what? It was a blast. John, John Shooty. <laughs> that was the second time we golfed. Remember the night golf? Oh, that was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if they ever found that cart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're looking, are we sorting things out here with the officials? The officials are definitely very meticulous here tonight. Yeah, no, they're doing a good job. I'm not sure that they're aware that it's very cold out. Okay. We're trying to speed this thing up a little bit, but. If the clock spins here, that would be great. <laughs> Can we get one of those 10-second runoff things? Can oh, they're checking the side. Yeah, look, they're checking the chain gang over oh, here. Oh, you know, we know those guys. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have issues. I think you got Jared Enzyme up there. I don't even know if he knows how to read or oh, see or anything. Dana Phipps is over Dana there. Dana Phipps is up there. A lot of, yeah, there's just, there's going to be issues. I think we're finally getting it set here. <laughs> we it, won't, it won't be our first stoppage for the chain gang, I can tell you that. We warned Dana when he came through before the, we went on the air here tonight. Yeah. We're getting some close-ups. We are definitely getting some close-ups. 
All right, a uh, third down here and eight yards to go for the Raiders, and they have not really been able to do anything much on offense so far, and they'll throw this one down that right sideline. It'll be caught. Are they calling a catch Beautiful here? catch there, there by go. Tucker Antoine. And, well, Brent, uh, that was uh, a beautifully thrown pass and kind of led Antoine right down that sideline and uh, hit him right in stride. Yeah, a perfect pass, a um, little bit shielded there on the sideline by you know, um, if he was able to keep his feet in, obviously was called, so he was. But tremendous pass, tremendous catch. So the Raiders open up quarter number two with their only their second first down of the night. Antoine, a first down run there. Able to get a couple. And Antoine, you know, he's had the two big catches tonight. Also had a handful of carries here, so been extremely featured here for the Wayne Trace offense. So we'll see what they dial up here. Hey, you know, Brent, this uh, Wayne Trace uh, offense not really having much luck here tonight. Well, you can tell the weather's going to play in a little bit, but the Ayersville defense coming right after him, making aggressive plays, getting the ball. Stiller back to pass, all kinds of time, pocket holes. Now it collapses, he's got to run a little bit, and he'll just throw that one almost intercepted, yeah. but no, to go in and out of the hands of his receiver, Jude Stoller, he was looking for on that right sideline. And well, obviously uh, Kyle Stoller likes to roll to his right, and the uh, pilot defense kind of flushed him that way. But huge now, they're going to force another long third down here for this Wayne Trace offense. Yeah. Kyle Stoller throws a very pretty ball. Rolled out there and threw a nice pass, tipped and almost intercepted. So, you know, he's going to connect on some. He's not going to connect on others. But the Ayersville defense doing a great job tonight containing it. It's a big third down here for Wayne Trace again, looking to convert. Stoller steps up into the pocket. He'll go across the middle, and it'll be in and out of the hands of his receiver looking for Brady Miller. And it was a little high, Brent, but those are balls that you gotta you, you got to haul that in. He really? had a lot of green space in front of him. Soft zone, so a lot of space to, you know, find a soft spot in there to get a pass completed. A little high, but like you said, probably pretty catchable. You know, if you make that play there, you're looking at an easy first down probably in the neighborhood of 50 to 20 yards on the low end. So, you know, those are chain-moving plays. And when they string those together, they're going to have successful drives. Right now they've only got a couple so far tonight, and they haven't been able to bunch any together. Stoller back to punt here for... Wayne Trey snap is there, and he's look. He's going to try and run it here, well, and I don't know what happened. No, I think he saw some pressure and, and rushed to judgment there before kicking. So that will be a rough go of it uh, here for this Wayne Trace offense, and the Pilots are going to have great field position again here on this uh, fourth down, yeah. or excuse me, on the first down coming off that uh, – Looks Miscue like on the punt. Starting right at about the 38-yard line. So, you know, they had the drive start at the 9-yard line. But starting anytime you start on this side of the 50, you know, in the uh, opponent's territory there, you're in a good spot. You know, they're 38 yards away from punching another one right in. Be watching here. It's going to be pretty simple. You're going to see a nice ground attack from the pilots. So we've got another official's timeout here. Making sure everything's in order. I believe the back judge might have been on the wrong side of the football. You know, you got, you got to watch out for those back judges. First down, it'll be a handoff inside to Kneven, and he just pulls that pile forward inside the 20 to the uh, 19, maybe 18-yard line there, and nice strong run on first down for Torian Kneven. It's simple. It, it really is, and, and both, both, both teams, the fans, uh, the announcers, we all know what's going to happen there. Um, they're going to pound the, pound the ball on the ground, but... When you're strong like Ayersville is up front and you got good runners that finish off run plays, I would too. I mean, it's nine yards there, and it's been pretty much the status quo all night. So second down and one, uh, staying way ahead of the game here uh, as far as uh, on schedule. <laughs> They're ahead of schedule here. Uh, very ahead of schedule. It's a little misdirection there. Delano's got the first down near the 25, down near the 24-yard line. And, you know, Brent, you mentioned it earlier. It's almost a, a back and forth. Delano yeah. can even. Delano can even. Uh, it, is, it really is seven carries for Abe Delano, six for Torian can even. They're chunking yardage. They're, they're averaging probably close to seven, eight yards a carry tonight. So, you know, it's it's been on display for the pilots. And, you know, you look at Lucas Fishball, only a few yards, but he's two for two passing. Outside sure. of the fourth down non-conversion, they've played pretty darn good football. 
First down and 10 now at the 23 yard line for the Pilots as they'll bunch them in the backfield. Next to Fishpaw and it'll be the second man through. This is Kenevan with it inside the 20 to the 15 yard line and it'll be enough for a, a first down there for no, excuse me, not enough for the first down there. Just short. Looks like we got about eight. But into our Stamball Jewelers red zone again here tonight yeah. at the 15-yard line. And, well, Brent, uh, see if they can convert here again. They Last time they had a long drive, uh, were stopped on a fourth down. Yeah, um, they did stall the, the one time down here. Obviously got the ball right back and punched it in. But this is where you get into play where Wayne Trace is going to have to really tighten it up. Bend but don't break. If you give up points, give up three. So it'll be Delano with it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> kind of they, that they, back. They run very, very similar. Delano on the run. There we go. Is it up for a first so the pilots down. will have another first down. And I so far, we got an injured Wayne Trace Raider. Oh, no. 70. Looks like no parity. Yeah, we don't like to see that. We don't want to see anybody hurt. And he's laying face down. 8.51 to go before halftime. Let's take a timeout here. You're watching High School Football on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rout with you here on DC TV Sports as the athletic trainers are out on the field taking a look at uh, Noah Parody. They're looking at that right arm, looks like, uh, from our vantage point. But, well, Brent, that last play, uh, Ayersville's seventh first down of this first half. Yeah. Uh, and then doing some quick numbers here, I've got Wayne Trace down for two. Right. Yeah. And, and you see the control of the clock. Um, you know, getting an average of almost seven yards per carry. Sure. You, you can do the math. They're getting a first down on every other play on average. So it's been complete control on both sides, really, but especially on offense for Ayersville. And the, when you're starting with short field position, you're able to gain yards at the rate they're able to gain them on the ground. You're going to control the clock. You're going to move the change. You're going to stay on schedule, stay ahead of schedule. Sure. And they've played phenomenal so far tonight. So we know it's a big game for them. They know it's a big game for them. They're showing up here early. Good to see Noah Parody uh, up on his feet walking off. And uh, Brent, uh, when I talked uh, earlier this week with Matt Holden, he said mistakes have been kind of a thorn in their side this year. Uh, you've got a fumble already. Right. And you had a miscue on a punt that led to great field position yep. here. And you punted on your first drive. So three, yeah. uh, the, your first three drives offensively tonight have not been uh, what you would call good. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> By any means of anybody's imagination. Not ideal outcomes. You look at the scoreboard right now, you're down 8 to nothing where we stand. So you're still in the football game. You tighten it up at any point and make a big play, and that can change quickly. First and 10 at the 12 now is Kenevan will have it on first down. No, excuse me, that's Delano. He bulldozes a guy at the 10. He'll go into the end zone, and it's a 12-yard touchdown run for Abe Delano, and that will be his second touchdown run of the night here with 8.36 to go before halftime. Tremendous run, his longest gain of the night, 12 yards. So he's sitting at 56 with two touchdowns, able to punch it in. Um, and, and Ayersville's done anything they've wanted to on the ground for the most part tonight. That continues there. And I don't foresee them going away from it. If it isn't broke, no need to fix. And so far tonight for the Pilots, it hasn't been broken. So they'll look to go for two here again. As they'll have two backs in the backfield. I wonder which one it'll be. It'll be can even with it. He'll go right up the gut. He'll bulldoze his way across the goal line. And another two-point conversion. And uh, I feel like we're kind of in deja vu here. Delano yeah. gets the touchdown. Can right. even gets the two-point conversion. Yeah. Ayersville strikes again. 16 to nothing. They're leading Wayne Trace. 8.36 to go here before halftime. Back with more after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rotwin with you on our uh, week number nine broadcast here of high school football. Let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. It uh, was a drive that went uh, 38 yards in just six plays. Uh, it took about three minutes and 45 seconds off the clock, capped off by a Abe Delano 12-yard uh, touchdown run for a Premier Bank touchdown. Can even with the two-point conversion. We saw it in the earlier in the game. We saw it here. 16-0 Ayersville. Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. Yeah, it definitely was uh, sticking to the bread and butter, running the football and doing it well. Um, it's been the story so far tonight. Short field position, solid defensive play, and just dominating the run game for Ayersville on offense. So 16 to nothing pilots. Um, Wayne Trace looking to get some momentum going here. They're going to have to get the ball, and it's going to have to be through the air. That's their strong suit. That's what they need to do. And when you're trailing, you got to start throwing. So what are the pilots going to do? Or excuse me, what are the Wayne Trace going to do here? Uh, obviously, you've gotten, you've really gotten nowhere offensively. They've got to put something together with this football. Yeah, they really, they really have to. And you got to get the ball out there, and you got to start doing something and getting first downs. So. Hudson Myers will return it for Wayne Trace. He'll get right out to the 20-yard line, and that's where this Wayne Trace offense will come onto the field. And they'll start with, uh, well, they got eight and a half minutes to go. Getting down the field is not a question. I mean, there's sure. no question about getting down the field. Eight and a half minutes is an eternity right. uh, sure. for this offense. But what do they have to do here to, to put something together? You know, I, I love the dual threat ability with Kyle Stoller. He obviously can pass the football. He's struggled quite a bit tonight. Get out there, utilize those legs. Mix it up with Antoine and get out there and, you know, you got to get some positive yards. You can not, can't continually get nothing. So if you got to utilize the legs as the quarterback, you got to. Get out there and pick up four or five yards and keep the chains moving. Stoller back to pass. They're setting up a little screen and sniffed out by the Ayersville defense. And wow, what a great job there by Cole Moorhead to get back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, he had all kinds of uh, powder blue jerseys around him, but uh, I believe that's Col Columbia blue, actually, Brent. Yeah, Columbia blue, huh? Um, but, uh, you know, I think he actually might have gained a yard. Yeah, he got a yard. It looked like he fell forward and fell past the line of scrimmage, so he did gain a yard there, but sniffed out really well by the Ayersville defense. Nice-looking play. Just had four or five defenders <laughs> that read it really well. I, I, liked, I like what Wayne Trace is thinking Safe. there. It, Safe. So... It'll be Antoine with it and a biggest run go. of the night here. He breaks one out near midfield across the 45-40 of Ayersville, 35-30, 20. Will anybody catch him? No, nope. he's going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. 79 yards. Wow, just like that. There's that big play. A 79-yard touchdown run for Tucker Antoine. And, wow, they just flipped the script on this one, there Brent, go, because right that's uh, their first, uh, obviously, probably – more yards than they've gained the entire first half so far. Yeah, they had a couple of big pass plays, but they were sitting on like 51 yards of total offense. Boom, one play, 79 yards, hole open wide up. Tucker Antoine hit the hole. Um, nobody there. And actually, you did see a little bit of extra speed. Put it into another gear to run past the secondary and get down the field. He got to about the 30-yard line, and it was clear as day. He wasn't going to get caught. So he got that big, big-time offensive play that Wayne Trace needed. Raiders are now, you know, with – Another force to go for two yeah, here. Yeah, if they're going for going for two here, you convert here, you're back to a one-position football game. So it'll be a direct snap to Antoine, and he's going to be hit, and he'll be short. Close. He, I think he tried to yeah, he stretch tried to it reach. out, and he's going to be short. Yep. So two-point try. I, again, I like what they did there, direct snap to Antoine, give him some momentum. but A um, little bit of a different look, but, you know, not able to get there. He needed two, two and a half, three, you know, able to, by the time he caught the ball, probably needed about five, but able to uh, fall right near the goal line. Fell about a half yard short. Tucker Antoine with a Premier Bank touchdown cuts the lead 16 to 6. We're back with more after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. The Wayne Trace Raiders get on the board here at our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. Just two plays. It goes 80 <laughs> yards in 50 seconds. Uh, capped off by a 79-yard uh, touchdown run by Tucker Antoine. It's a Premier Bank touchdown for Antoine. He tried on the two points. It failed. 16-6 yeah. Ayersville here with 7.36 to go in the second quarter. That's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, Brent. And, well, uh, 79 yards. That was the spark that this Wayne Trace team needed can they capitalize this so is this going to maybe uh, get their defense fired up a little bit more because there's for offensively doing what they like uh, yeah. so far here in this first half so far Wayne Trace has not been able to stop the run but being able to counter that with a big play is what you're going to have to do and at some point you're going to have to lock it down on defense for Wayne Trace they're getting some momentum there with the big touchdown so if they can snowball that into on the defensive side and be able to come back with a big stop, you know, it's going to play into their hands and they're going to have to chunk a few plays together. But right now you're heading out on defense trying to get a big stop. Well, they're trying to do something here, a little uh, trickeration on Very that. Very interesting. It's the high floating the kick and Abe Delano. Uh, Abe Delano luckily there for the Pilots. Uh, it, Fair catch, went yeah. down to a knee, took care of that. I don't know if that was an attempt at an onside kick. I don't think it was, but, um, you know, they've given Ayersville pretty good field position tonight, so we'll continue to do so here. Ironically, tonight we've had a one-play yard or a one -play drive, a two-play drive, and then the longest drive of the night by Ayersville didn't result in any sure. points. So. 13 plays, to yeah, be exact. Yeah. 13 plays, no points. Three plays no, combined. Excuse me, for 14. Two. Right, think, you know, so it's been an interesting night so far for sure. All right, so first down and 10 for Ayersville at their own 38-yard line. And it'll be the second man through is uh, Delano, I believe, this time. Nope, excuse me, can even. even. He'll be out they, near midfield. And they run very alike. <laughs> that might be enough for a first down. Definitely close. And they're going to say first down for the Pilots. So one play, one first down, give him, I think, about 10 and a half. Can even sitting at 66 yards, Delano with the two scores at 56 yards, so they've been extremely effective on the ground. Um, safe to say, can even a thousand yard rusher yeah, here for I this uh, Arizona Pilots team. I think we're pretty safe at this point. So, officials stopping play again. Not sure what we're. Chain game looks to be in line. Yeah, I think they're all right. Not their fault this time. So they're trying to get something, maybe a clock issue. There we go. Yep, they put five seconds back on the clock. It was not stopped on the first down. Sure. So five seconds will now spin off before they snap. And a first down and 10 for Ayersville, just shy of midfield. Delano with it. He'll go into Wayne Trace territory, and he'll be chopped down near the uh, Raider 45, maybe a little short. Moorhead piercing his way through and getting the stop. He's an athlete for sure. We always talk about, also wears number 12, so we know he's a good ball player. Most of them that wear 12 are good. All of them are. Um, but yeah, athlete, great on offense, tremendous on defense. You and your Tom Brady obsession. Something like that. He's the greatest of all time. Easy. Rolling <laughs> near the halfway mark of our second quarter. It'll be second man through Keneven inside the 45. Going to gain a couple of yards, but even on the run, tackle by number 50. Caleb Nothing much there for Ayersville, and they're going to be, looks like about three yards shy of that first down here, and this will be well, a third down chance for this Wayne Trace defense to, I don't know if you, I don't know it's, if you get a punt here or not. I mean, I, yeah, I'd almost say at the rate they're ch chunking off field, you're probably sure. going to get it. You're probably in four down territory here if you're Ayersville. Yeah, if you're Ayersville, you look at this and you say, we get two carries, we're going to get that yardage. So lock it up if you're Wayne Trace, get the guys in the box and lock in on that those two running backs and get a stop. So third down and four-ish officially, three and a half. And Fishball will keep it himself. Beautiful move there Look by Fishball. That. And that'll be enough for a uh, Pilots first down. And uh, you don't see it a lot, Brent, but he tucked that ball really, really well. And it was just a little RPO for Fishball. Yeah. Saw the wide open space That's there. It. And listen, when you got you get Delano and Kneven both going out to that right side, the middle of the field cleared up, and a nice job there by Fishball to recognize that 
and take it himself. Yeah, and, and that's a great play there. Second carry for Fishpaw's biggest, longest of the night of only four yards, but only needed two and a half there. So perfect time to call that play and easily pick up the first down. At the 40-yard line now, it'll be second man through Delano at the 35. Spin move near the 30, down near the 25. Still oh on my. his feet at the 20. Oh inside the red zone, all the way down what to the 10 run. yards. There's a little bit of everything on that one. Stumbled, bumbled, yeah. spin move, ran over a guy. Yeah. Used his hands, used his, his, his neck, his shoulder pads, everything there to stay up on the ground. So, yeah, tremendous run. Hit hard a couple times. It looked like he was going to be knocked down but able to stay on his feet and turn that into a big-time carry. All the way down to the 11-yard line inside of our Stamball Jewelers red zone again here tonight for this Ayersville Pilots team. And it'll be that dual threat in the backfield again, Delano and Keneven. And it'll be Delano again with it, and he'll go off right. No, excuse me, that's Keneven. Will he have his first there touchdown of the night? And it's a Premier Bank Keneven. touchdown for Torian Keneven. As he goes 11 yards, and well, I suppose it was his turn to to, yeah. to take it in. We'll have to see if they give the ball to Delano for the two-point here and switch it up rolls a little bit. But Torian can even find in his first score of the night. Um, on his 10th carry, able to punch it in there. He's sitting at 79 yards, Delano at 91. It's just been a clinic for Ayersville on offense running the football. They haven't had to utilize Lucas Fishpaul's arm much to throw here. And it's, it's been pretty easy for them. Able to also reclaim that momentum, the little bit that Wayne Trace had grabbed with the big play on their last possession. They'll go for two here as both those backs are in the backfield. And it will be <laughs> Delano with it. <laughs> and Delano will have the two-point conversion. And well, I'll tell you what, they, they just we said it so many times here tonight. It's just been back and forth with those two. Ayersville 24, Wayne Trace 6, 4.41 to go before halftime. We're back with more after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Routon with you here. Let's get a Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. It was a well, not as long of a drive. Six sure. plays uh, that went uh, about three minutes and went 38 yards, capped off by an 11-yard Premier Bank touchdown run for Torian Keneven. And Abe Delano gets the two-point conversion, 24-6. to six, Our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. And that's all we've seen, Brent. It's a back-and-forth heavy dose. Delano, Keneven, yeah. Delano, Keneven. You know, Keneven now with one score, 10 carries on 79, sitting at 79 yards. Delano, uh, that was Keneven. I, uh, Delano is at 11 carry, so just alternating back and forth. Every time Delano scored, Keneven got converted on the two-point. Last, last touchdown here when Keneven scored, Delano converted on the two-point. So you see that two-headed monster back there, big-time third-down run for Fishpaw on, on the last possession, hit you know one of his two carries. They've just utilized that ground. They see a weakness in the Wayne Trace defense in that front seven, and they're able to take advantage of it tonight. Well, for Wayne Trace, they're back down by two scores now again and they're going to have to uh, really try to piece something together here before halftime. Looking for Myers to get them set up with decent field possession yeah. position, excuse me, and he does. He's going to be out across the 30 near the 35 yard line. Yeah, good starting spot. You'll take that almost every time if you can get the ball out past the 25 like we said, out past the 30, especially near the 35. You're right at a healthy spot to with four and a half minutes here and three timeouts left, they have plenty of time to put a lengthy drive together and maybe convert and get back into the ball game. Fast moving here yeah, with for a lot the most of, part. A lot, of, a lot of ground game and really for both sides, obviously predominantly by Ayersville. Ayersville's had the ball, it seems like, 80% sure. yeah. of, of the first half. So they've controlled that clock, kept their, their offense out on the field, kept that Wayne Trace defense out on the field, and that always bodes well for the team who has the ball. So if you look at it, I mean, play-wise here, yeah. obviously Ayersville's had the ball way more. Right. To do some math at halftime for you. Wayne Trace will start this drive with a throw to the near sideline. It'll be complete and just puts his head down, goes forward. That's Brady Miller with the reception on first down. And, you know, that's what they're going to have to do. And you've got an injured pilot, and that's not good for Ayersville. That's Lucas Fishpaul, the quarterback. And... 
he's down on the ground here, and you don't like to see any injuries, but. No, definitely don't. 421 to go before halftime. Let's quick take a, a quick timeout. You're watching High School Football on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Ayersville High School as the athletic trainers are still out there taking a look at uh, Lucas Fishpaul. And, well, Brent, as we said, uh, this pilot's offense has really, I mean, they've had a drive of 14. They had one of one, obviously, right. on the on the fumble. They had another drive of six. That last one was six. So you're yeah. at uh, 12 and 14. That's 26, 26 plays. 27 plays of offense. Three pass plays. Everything else has been a run. I mean, you talk about controlling the clock. For Wayne Trace, uh, let's see, 13, 15. They've now had it for 18 plays. Right. And, and, and you've had a one, punt, two, three, four, a fumble. Six, six um, incomplete passes for and, Wayne Trace. Yeah. And so when you look at uh, when you look at what's going on here, Obviously, Wayne Trace has got to figure out a way to keep that football yeah. uh, and, and do, if nothing else, just to sustain a little bit of drive. I mean, their one touchdown was a two-play drive. Exactly. And we know most of these kids are playing both sides of the ball, so you're not getting a whole lot of rest anyway. But when, you're long, when your touchdown, your long yardage drive happened to be two plays, those few kids that are sitting out on offense and playing defense aren't getting much of a sure. break. So a fish ball comes off on his own accord. I'm good to see there as... Stoller will hand it off to Antoine on a second down and three. So he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. He needed three looks, maybe got a yard or two. Yeah, it looks like he got about a yard there, and it's a big play. Huge play for Wayne Trace now with the clock running inside four minutes. You're looking here to have an extended drive. If you give the ball back to Ayersville with three, three and a half minutes to go, sure. um, they're going to be in position to possibly get right down the field again and score. So big play here. You need to find a way to get those two yards. Again, I love it. Look at Kyle Stoller and see if he can get it with his legs. So third down and two. Stoller's going to go to the air and he'll throw a uh, into coverage. Abe Delano was there for Ayersville. He was looking for Dylan Hildebrand, his, I think his first target of the night uh, here tonight, but uh, I mean, just blanket coverage there by Ayersville. Yeah, we might be in two down territory. I, I don't know. We'll see what they're doing here. Looks like they may look to stay on the field yeah, here. I mean, that's probably why you saw such an aggressive pass play. Antoine with it, oh and my. he's going to be short it's of the close. first down. I think he needed wow. to get all the way to the 45. and one yard. Unbelievable. Just a tremendous stop by the Ayersville defense. So, I mean, if you look at that, Brent, there's another four-play drive right. that results in a turnover and downs. Yep. Ayers going to have great field position here. they got two timeouts left, three and a half minutes to go, and 44 yards. Wayne Trace not doing themselves a lot of favors in, you know, in a couple aspects of the game. Those aren't considered turnovers in terms of fumbling the football and giving it back or throwing an interception, but a short drive you know, in that situation, four plays, and immediately turning it over right down here is no different than an interception or a fumble. So the pilots come back onto the field here on first down, and uh, so we'll be blown dead. See what happens. And we got a dead ball foul and a false start. I believe actually it might be the first penalty in the night on Ayersville. We had a block in the back, which was, was that way trace. Was on yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is first penalty, I believe. So only the second. Well, if you t obviously there was a sideline warning. Yeah, so for, yeah, yeah, for sure. But in terms of losing yardage, yeah, first real legitimate mistake there. So you got a. Stoppage now by Wayne Trace. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. Wayne Trace burns their first one of the night. We'll take it with them. It's uh, three minutes and 24 seconds to go before halftime. Ayersville 24. Wayne Trace 6. Back with more after this on DC TV Sports.
Out of the timeout, Ayersville will have a first down and 15, probably the first time they've really struggled. Yeah. Uh, as far as position wise here tonight, uh, should, <laughs> and it's coming with yeah. just a few minutes before halftime. Yeah, should we say first time behind schedule? They're behind schedule for sure. the first time tonight. So, you know, uh, I don't think they change a whole lot with needing to get 15 yards on this one. You still got three, four chances to do it. So, and the first down carry will be the second man through. This is Delano, and well, I'll give Wayne Trace credit there. A nice job of uh, bottling him up, and not much there on that first down run for Abe Delano. No, definitely good coverage there on the defense getting into the backfield and not allowing him to gain too much there. It looks like Delano got a solid yard. Um, but for what they've done tonight on the ground, you know, you'll take that if you're the Wayne Trace Raider defense on every play. Just one yard there for Delano. 48 yards uh, now, 48 yard line now, excuse me, of Wayne Trace on this second down and 14. Pilots letting that clock spin, and they'll snap it, and Fishball's going to throw, and it'll be just Ooh. out of the hands of Ray Wolfram. He was looking on that quick, quick slant there, and, uh, well, to be honest with you, Brent, uh, Arm hasn't gotten a lot of work out here tonight. No, I mean, it, it was time to take a chance. He kind of felt it after getting one yard there. You're looking at second down and 14. You're looking at we could run, continue to run the ball and milk that clock a little bit, but if you're going to take a chance, that seemed like a soft spot to do it. So nice-looking pass, just a little bit out in front of Wolfram. So we'll see what they will dial up here on third down and 14. Clock stops with 2.38 to go before halftime. Both backs to the backfield again for Fishball, and it will be bumbled a little bit on the snap there, but it'll be Delano. Oh, no. He's got room to go 40, 35, 30. Off to the races inside the 10, and he'll be chopped down. Wow. Nice job there. Delano with the run. Jude Stoller. Wow, what a nice run there for Delano, and he'll be all the way down to the seven yard line. So give him 41 yards and right back into our Stamball Jewelers red zone here tonight. And big run there on a uh, huge third down for Ayersville. Yeah, just when you felt like Wayne Trace had some momentum going there on defense, they, you know, get, get gutted on that side by Abe Delano, who's now sitting north of 130 yards in the first half. It has just been a field day for the backfield for Ayersville. And in a time when they really needed a big play, they got a really big play. Clock spinning under the two-minute mark before halftime. Can even with it on first down and goal from the nine, excuse me, from the seven. And Can even will have a touchdown run, his second of the night. It's a Premier Bank touchdown as Can even goes seven yards and another Ayersville touchdown. And they have broken this one open, wide open here before halftime. Yeah, big time run there. You could tell uh, the big the big play by Delano, um, picking up 41, knocking him inside the red zone, actually inside the 10 yard line, was almost like a, a backbreaker for Wayne Trace and inside handoff there to Kneeven. We've seen it all night. Able to you know needed nine, found it. Able to fall right, or sorry, needed seven, fell right into the end zone for seven yards. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, you I mean, want to roll the dice here that it, it's Delano. It, this is supposed to be Abe Delano. And it is Dave Delano. He'll come right side. Wayne Trace stretches it out. He'll lower the shoulder, stays on his feet, and wow. he will get the two-point conversion. That's a, wow. That's a man run right there. That's a manly run right there. Really held up a couple times, able to get use the entire field, get right to the pylon there, and reach out and fall right in. And we have another injured Wayne Trace Raider. It's number five, Brady Miller, who is down and Training staff will come take a look at him. Pilots strike again. A minute 51 to go here in uh, our first half. It's Ayersville 32, Wayne Trey 6. More to come on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush and Brett Rotten with you here on DC TV Sports as the Wayne Tree, or excuse me, the Ayersville Pilots have tacked on eight more. Let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. It was a drive that went 
Five plays, uh, a minute, 30, 44 yards capped off yep. by a uh, Torin Kenevan uh, seven-yard touchdown run. Abe Delano goes in for the two-point score, and it is now 32-6. to six. Ayersville with a minute 51 to go before halftime, and uh, our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, Brent, uh, you know, I hate to kind of go back to the well again, but, you know, this Wayne Trace has just really not been able to do anything offensively and it's just put their defense behind the a ball so much here that that i mean when you get to that point uh <laughs> your back's against the wall and you're out there playing down after down after down your offense is on the field for three or four plays at a right. time um you know you don't have much time to even regroup on the sideline no it's kind of a catch-22 because you get your defense out there they get wore out and what do they have to do step right back out on the field you know nine of those kids and play on the offensive side of the ball and, sure. and they're dead so and they're running they're running down on energy and not able to do anything offensively there's one big play for the Wayne Trace offense so far in the first half. We'd be looking at a 32-point game already. Um, you know, Wayne Trace is very athletic, very good, but if they're not going to be regularly converting through the air and have to rely on their run, on their run game, they're not going to be as successful. Well, here's the thing: you're you're down 32 to six. Ayersville's going to get the second half kickoff. I know. Um, you haven't done anything. I mean, you're in jeopardy of a running clock here, yeah. and and I'm telling you. You and I have been through these before. That clock, when it starts to go, it doesn't stop. No, I mean. <laughs> and it, in that second half, if you get a running clock, it is tough to get yourself tough. back into the football game. I, I mean, and I, I'm sure maybe somewhere it's happened, but how many teams have, you know, been hit with the running clock and even been able to get the ball maybe back to a one-possession game? I don't think it's happened too often. You've got a lot of Ayersville folks leaving this game. Yeah, I think the weather is <laughs> playing a big part on that one. You wouldn't know about that. We're, 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 in, we're undercover. So Wayne Trace will take over at their own 41-yard line here as they've got a minute 44 to go before halftime, and they've got a pair of timeouts left as Kyle Stoller will have Antoine in the backfield with him, four receivers to, to either side, and it will be a first down throw across the middle. It'll be caught and into Ayersville territory, and a nice-looking play there as he hit Tremendous. Hudson Myers on a nice little slant pattern. That's a really nice play, a um, little play action, uh, inside read, pulled right down by Stoller and find, found Hudson Myers there for a nice, quick 14-yard uh, 14 14 pickup. Moving quickly now, they'll go tempo here, and it'll be a quick hitter to the near sideline, and it's caught across the 40, and it's hauled in by Colt Moorhead. And they're hustling back to the line of scrimmage here. I think they know as much as we do, Brent. Yeah. They've got to get some points on the football on the uh, scoreboard here to the, um, in this first half. Yeah, you're, you're playing a little bit with fire. And, um, you know, if you don't get some points here, you're going to put yourself in a very pr bad predicament starting in the second half. And those quick passes are going to work because Ayersville's defensive backs are playing a good 8 to 10 yards off the, uh, off the line of scrimmage here. And, and if you're, they'll, they'll try to go downfield there. But, you know, those quick hitters, Brent, if you're Wayne Trace, I'm just going to stick with that. If you look yeah. at this defensive scheme by Ayersville, you got, I mean, you're almost playing. Yeah, very soft coverage, and you're running with two timeouts a minute to go. Um, you know, clock periodically stops on a first down. You've got to keep moving the chains, getting yardage. Right now, it's up third and four. Clock spinning near the one-minute mark as Antoine will have it on. Antoine on the run. A third down run up the middle. I think they were just trying to get short. a first down there, and he's going to be short. Yeah, he's going to be a yard short. So clock spinning 50 seconds and rolling here before halftime. And don't forget, uh, Airsville gets the football coming out of halftime. Not a lot has went right for Wayne Trace, and almost Huge. everything has gone right for the Pilots. Huge fourth and two here, and Stoller will... Bring it back down. He's going to be pushed out to the right. He can run for the first down. He's got it down near the 30, inside the 30-yard line. So uh, Stoller Kyle Stoller recognizes yeah, and uses his feet to get a uh, Wayne Trace first down. That's 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 the X factor of the game, and I, I really thought we'd see a lot more tonight out of Kyle Stoller in his legs. He likes to drop back. He likes to take his time. He's very patient, reads the field very well, can run, and he's a big, big-time runner. Um, second carry, though, so... You know, only eight yards so far running the football tonight. It just feels like that missing element is something that you could bring into this game and sustain drives if you're able to be successful. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. We'll keep it here. 26 seconds to go before halftime. Ayersville 32, Wayne Trey 6. Brent, what have you seen uh, that, that's most impressed you here tonight from this pilot squad? It's obviously, I mean, it's the run game. It's the mix and match of uh, Torian Knieven and Abe Delano. 
two playmakers. We've seen them already this year. They're tremendous backs. Delano is kind of that H-back, kind of that X-factor, kind of that do-it-all. Um, and he's been featured tonight as a ball sure. carrier, and it has just been phenomenal to watch. They've literally almost alternated carries all night. Sure. And, and that's something we didn't see no, a couple of we weeks ago against Tenor. Well, averaging over eight yards a carry all night. So out of the uh, timeout here, it will be first and 10 at the 29-yard line as Stoller's back to pass, pressure coming, and it'll be oh. almost intercepted. Woo, boy, as uh, he was uh, in dangerous territory there, Leo, Leo Barraza. Uh, Leo Barraza. Uh, yeah, we say Leo Barraza every time we say Ayersville. We usually say it a few times. First time tonight, so a big play there, get his hands on the ball. If we're 20 degrees warmer, he might pick that football. 20 seconds to go before halftime. Second and 10 at the 29-yard line. And he's back to pass. Stoller to his right. And he'll go down towards the end zone. It'll be in and out of the hands of his receiver. He had a guy open. Yeah, some and space. And Jude Stoller down there. And we kind of wonder the wind a little bit playing some factor there and cold hands playing some factor there. But uh, nonetheless, ball's on the turf. And it's a third and 10 now for this Wayne Trace offense. And... Now this is, I don't want to say do or die here, but, yeah, you, I mean, you got to convert you got to come get away points. with points. I, I mean, if you get three, you get three. I mean, at this point in the game, you need to go for six. So you got 12 seconds. you got a timeout left. you got to try to take a couple shots at the end zone. Still have two receivers stacked either side, and Antoine in the backfield with him. Stoller back to pass. We know he can throw it down that far. He'll be sacked in the backfield. Huge play there by uh, the uh, – Ayersville defense, 36 was in there. And that is Eli Burner for this Ayersville defense. And I believe they're going to burn their, I believe they're going to burn their final timeout. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney law timeout. We'll take it with them three seconds before halftime. It's 32 to six Ayersville here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush, Brent Routon with you here on DC TV Sports. 32 to 6, Ayersville, three seconds before halftime, and a fourth down and 16 coming for Wayne Trace at the 35 yard line. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, you're looking for him to go for it here, yeah, knowing Ayersville's going to get the football coming out in the second half. Nothing to lose all to gain, throw it into the end zone, see what happens. You got a quarterback, Kyle Stoller, who's got the arm to get it there, take that chance, make it happen. Back to pass. He stands at his 40-yard line. He'll heave it down to the end zone. He's got a couple of receivers down there, and it'll be intercepted in the end zone. And will he come out? Nope. It'll be just kneeled on. I think that's Ray Wolfram down yep. there. Inter yep, nice pick. And you knew what was coming there. Ayers will put some safeties back there to play deep into the end zone. And it was a little bit of a jump off of right into Ray Wolfram's hands. And no harm, no foul for the Pilots. Well, we've reached halftime. It's our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show here from Ayersville High School, and it's 32-6, to six, all pilots here in this first half. And, well, Brent, I know we've, I mean, we kind of sound like a, um, kind of sound like a broken record here a little bit, but just nothing going for uh, Wayne Trace offensively here in this first half. No, there really isn't. They're struggling, absolutely struggling to move the ball for Wayne Trace. Had a couple big plays. Pass plays actually to the Antoine the back out of the backfield. He also sure. had the big run on the touchdown. That's really been their offense has kind of been on three plays. So, you know, not been their best half, but I, you can definitely tell they're suffering from Ayersville just bleeding the clock and, and beating them up. It's almost as Ayersville on offense is obviously the aggressor, but even hitting, you know, in, in terms of tackling sure. and all that, Ayersville with the football seems to be the aggressor tonight. It's our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. We'll take a time out. When we come back, we'll uh, look at the first half stats. We'll get you some scores from around Northwest Ohio. We'll check in with the uh, bands as they will perform here out on the field here at halftime as well. 32-6, to 6, Ayersville. Back with more after this on DCTV Sports.
Welcome back to our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union Halftime Show. Josh Bush and Brent Routon with you here from Ayersville High School, Craig McCord Field, as we are uh, watching what is an all Ayersville first half here. Pilots leading it 32-6. to six. And, uh, well, Brent, uh, the, the struggles of Wayne Trace, Let's just to give you an idea, their first uh, drive went seven plays, punt. Second drive, two plays, fumble. Uh, third drive was eight plays and they uh, goofed up on the, uh, the the exchange on the punt. So that was a turnover on downs. Uh, they did get a 79 yard touchdown run on their next drive. Uh, then they went four and out. Right. Uh, turnover, I mean I don't want to say three and out. They went forward on fourth down, didn't get sure. it. Turnover on downs and then right before the half, strung a few plays together. They went uh, nine plays there, but and again, it doesn't really matter much, but the right. interception going into halftime. Yeah, I mean, you're going to take a chance on that possession, but you, you said it, and it really, you know, it leads out the, the one drive that they've put points together was a two-play drive. They have had a couple drives that have had a little bit of length that haven't resulted in any points. And when you're doing that, you know, you continuously got to go out there and match what the other team is sure. doing, and they haven't been able to do it tonight. It's almost like they got behind, got behind a little more, made the big play to kind of get in the game. And then when they weren't able to rebound directly after that, it's really slid on downhill from there. Well, let's look at uh, Ayersville. <laughs> Their first drive, 14 plays, turnover <laughs> on downs. Uh, right. They get it right back off the fumble, one play, touchdown. Uh, then they go six plays, touchdown, six plays, touchdown, <laughs> and five plays, touchdown. So they, they had a turnover on downs on their longest drive of the night. <laughs> and then uh, after that, four straight touchdowns for this Ayersville offense and a heavy, heavy dose uh, of ground game here from the Pilots. You know, it's the two backs. It's it's Abe Delano. It's Torian Kneeven. And like you said, it, it's amazing to think they had the 14-play sure. drive, didn't result in points. It's really a 15-play drive. You get the ball right back and have one play. Yeah. It's almost an extension of that drive. But they've punched it in from on every possession from then on sure. out. Been short drives. It's just been the run game. Hats off. We haven't said a whole lot, but how about that offensive line just opening up yeah. holes left and right the, for the two They backs. have absolutely dominated here in this first half. Well, let's take a, uh, another time out here on our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union time or uh, halftime show. When we come back, we'll check in. The Wayne Trace marching band is on the field. We'll send it down to there. When we come back, more here from uh, halftime at Ayersville. Pilots lead it 32-6 to six on DC TV Sports.
this might make you scream. Here's the theme song from Halloween. Nice performance there by the uh, Raiders always, marching band here at halftime. Always good. I think the theme was Night at the Movies, so solid yeah, tonight. I saw some good stuff yep. out there as well. Well, let's uh, take a look at these two teams. Uh, Brenda, uh, some st halftime statistical numbers. Uh, let's start uh, with the Ayersville Pilots here tonight. Uh, and what did we see? Uh, <laughs> I think everybody knows that if you've been watching this first half, uh, heavy run presence here for this Ayersville Pilots team yeah, tonight. A unique setup, a unique offense tonight. Kind of fun to watch with the uh, two tailbacks alternating carries for the most part all night. Torian Kneven sitting at 11 carries, 86 yards, two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. Lucas Fishball has a couple carries mixed in the quarterback for six yards. But then go to the other side, 13 carries, 133 yards um, for Abe Delano. Also has two scores. And with that, has punched in a couple two-point two conversions himself. Through the year, not much to talk about. Two of four um, passing for five yards, both catches by w Ray Wolfram. So two catches, five yards for Wolfram. Fishball, two of uh, four through the air for five yards. Well, it's safe to say that uh, Torin can even uh, 17 yards needed to get to 1,000. Yeah, uh, He was over awesome. that through the first, half, first quarter, sure. I think. So yeah. The way this game's going, Abe Delano might have a 1,000 tonight. Well, as uh, we uh, look it over the other side uh, for the Wayne Trace Raiders here tonight, uh, offensively, we mentioned it already, has been pretty stagnant uh, offensively here tonight for the Raiders. You know, Kyle Stoller tends to be the big-time playmaker, the quarterback on offense for Wayne Trace, but tonight it's been Tucker Antoine. He's carried the ball eight times for 88 yards, really one big carry for 79 sure. yards and a touchdown. Um, outside of that, Stoller, if you include sack yardage, has three carries for two yards. Um, Cole Moorhead has an end around for two yards. On offense, um, passing the ball, you know, Kyle Stoller's been okay tonight. He's, com he's completed seven passes um, for a total of 69 yards and uh, has completed them to five different receivers. Tucker Antoine, the big one there as the running back as well, has two catches on the night. Um, for 41 yards. Hudson Myers, a catch for 14. Two catches for Cole Moorhead for seven yards. One catch, Brady Miller, seven yards. Overall, you know, it's been the Tucker Ant Antoine little bit of offensive explosion for Wayne Trace. But tonight, that's really where they stand. It's been all Ayersville, and that's about it. And you're seeing that on the scoreboard here as well at halftime, 32-6 to six on our Midwest Community 
Federal Credit Union Halftime Show. Good to have you along here from Ayersville High School. Uh, congratulations uh, as uh, I think our queen just walked by there. There's the queen. Taylor Craft, uh, homecoming queen, and uh, Brady Miller. Or excuse me, Brady Clark. Yeah. Couple I tackles, got the Brady. couple crowns. There you go. Kind of like that. Homecoming uh, royalty here tonight, co crowned in the uh, pregame show. Ayersville Pilots marching band on the field right now for their halftime performance. Let's send it down to the field and uh, take a look at what the Ayersville Pilots band has for us here tonight at halftime. Jumping forward to 2012, our next song was used in various commercials and trailers, becoming a sleeper hit, topping out at number three on the U.S. Billboard charts. That alone is enough to make your system blow, but it also held the record for the most weeks spent on the Billboard Top 100 list at 87 weeks for over seven years. Directed by Senior Field Commander Cheyenne Wilms and featuring Pilot Majorette Destiny Lawhorn, it's all systems go for Imagine Dragons song Radioactive. this evening is a song that has been used again and again as a rally cry when you've just had enough. With influences from glam rock band Slade and the Christmas carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, this song landed itself on the Parents Music Resource Center's Filthy 15 list for supposed violent lyrics. Directed by Senior Field Commander Tori Klinger, from 1984, here's Twisted Sisters, We're Not Gonna Take It.
Brazil uh, Pilots marching band out there on the field uh, doing their thing. And uh, well, I tell you what, uh, sounded good here tonight on homecoming night here at Ayersville. Our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union uh, halftime show rolls on. We'll take our final timeout. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some scores from around Northwest Ohio, and we'll get you set, set for second half action. That's next here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush, Brent Rodden with you here on our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union Halftime Show. It's Ayersville 32, Wayne Trace 6. Pilots will get the ball coming out in this second half, and you know what that means. Uh, we're on the cusp of uh, a potential running clock here, and I mean, most nights you don't want to see that, but it's a little chilly. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, you got some fans really sticking it out, which I'm a little surprised by. Yeah. We've Wayne got, Trace side's still yeah, got quite a few people. Yeah, we've definitely seen a bit of them leave, but, you know, a lot more. And it is chilly tonight, threat of rain all around. It's not ideal. You know what this is, though? Week 9 football weather. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's take a look at some scores from around Northwest Ohio. Brent, uh, I know you've got the score bug up there. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, talk. Uh, let's start in the Green Meadows Conference. What do we got uh, GMC-wise here uh, for uh, – couple of scores. Yeah, I mean, looking at uh, a battle of two teams that are a little bit down this year, Defiance County rivals, uh, Fairview and Hicksville. The Fairview Apaches, the Fighting Doug Rakes is up 35 to nothing over Hicksville. So a big one, uh, really kind of a, uh, at halftime here. Tenora only up 10 to nothing over Edgerton. So and lack you, of and offense you in that, that game. And you, lacked, you mentioned little, in the in the pregame, yeah, don't get caught in a trap Yeah, you here. don't want a little bit of a trap game going on there. So Tomorrow, we obviously have our score here. And then we talked to, in the pregame about Antwerp rebounding from their loss last week against Ayersville. And they have done so, so far at half, leading 38 to nothing against Paulding. Uh, we uh, mentioned uh, Defiance, uh, another team that we've covered throughout the season here, and they're battling on the road at Salina tonight. A, a huge matchup there for the Bulldogs, uh, taking on the Salina version of the Bulldogs. And yeah. it's a close close football game down in Salina. 3 nothing at the half for Salina in a lead. They've added a touchdown. It's 10 nothing now, still not out of – you know, still definitely hanging in the game for Coach Cooper and, and the Bulldogs down there. So want to see them bounce back, put a couple scores together and get ahead in that game. What else sticks out to you in the uh, WBL tonight? The, the battle of the winless. You know, you have Shawnee, a winless Shawnee team, a winless out of a Glandorf team. Always going to be a good game when you do that. Two evenly matched teams, 8-3 to three Shawnee right now. Van Wert just pouring on Kenton, 27-6 to six at the half. You've got Wapakoneta, old Wapak, you know. Wapak? So Solid, solid program every single year. Thirty-seven to nothing. And that's a team that really yeah. we thought maybe at the beginning of the year is this going to yeah, be an is, off is, year is for Wapakoneta? Is this a Walpock five hundred level team? Are they just average for once? Because they're usually pretty good. They met they their they've met their stride. Yeah. It on so got healthy. Thirty-seven nothing against Bath. Very good Bath team who we saw last sure. week. And well, then you got the Elida St. Mary's game. You look at the game possibly that could be pretty good. Elida surprised a lot of people this year. Twenty-two to nothing Rough Riders. Well, let's uh, flip it over, NWOAL. Uh, obviously, the uh, eyes were in uh, Archbold tonight. Uh, Blue Streaks hosting Patrick Man. Henry. And uh, that looks like uh, our, our update was late in the second quarter, so not even in at half. This is why, 37 to 22 mm -hmm. Archibald. You got points in that game over 60 so far. Anything else stand out to there? Wasion like Bryan, always a rivalry game there. Two teams that are always pretty good. Wasion leads 13 to 12 in the third quarter, got a nice tight game. Liberty Center, who we saw early in this year, Man, they may good. be they may be the best team in Northwest Ohio, and, and it may not even. And be I'm close. telling you, what, they've been good for the last couple of years. This I, may be a better team than it, they've had. It's insane to look at their point differential, and when they play a team where you're like, finally, a team that could give Liberty Center a challenge, and they beat every team. So we'll look at the game against Patrick Henry a few weeks. ago. Forty-eight to nothing in the third quarter against Delta. I mean, that game's that game's over. And then finally, you got Evergreen slightly leading over Swanton, ten to seven. All right, uh, any. Uh, any other scores? I know Napoleon and uh, Bowling Green uh, tangling tonight in the Northern Lakes League. See, we've got Napoleon currently up 21 to nothing over Bowling Green, so that's good news for Defiance as well with the win earlier this year against Napoleon. They've been playing great football as of late, so the Wildcats out there and rolling. 
Let's see. Uh, anything else uh, standing out here to you? Nothing really. Cl no. uh, yeah. Nothing really close in the BVC Northwest Conference. Look at that! Oh my! Blowouts across the board. Yeah, you got Cres it. Crestview yeah, thirty-five go. nothing over Spencerville. Let's, uh, let's see. Lipsick. Lipsick thirty-three nothing over Delphus Jefferson. Forty-two to nothing. Columbus Grove leading Ada. Finally, we got a, a close one here. Bluffton forty-two to nothing at Allen East. You literally have all games running clock. Well, and and. If you look at that Northwest Conference, though, Brent, awesome. you've got the top end and you got the bottom end. It's there's not really leagues. a gray area in yeah. the middle. Yep, there's not. Um, and and we saw it for the first part of the league. They were matched up against the really good right. against the really bad. They they've had a couple of weeks of of the good against the you know the top. I guess I don't want to say the good and the bad. The top against the top, and now you've got sure. some matchups here again that are a little lopsided. Yeah, there's a line in the sand. And it's pretty black and white. You got the top half. You got the bottom half. There's not a whole lot of gray hanging out in the middle. And you're seeing when you get the schedule aligned perfectly tonight, where you get all the matchups being an upper half team against the bottom half team, and you are seeing blowouts across the board. So you get that from time to time. Our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show here from Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brett Rotten with you as we are uh, ticking away. They've uh, got their halftime warm-ups done, and they're going to be getting onto the field for uh, for let's let's talk keys here. Uh, Wayne, you know, if you're Ayersville, you just got to keep rolling. For Wayne Trace, uh, you know, if you're Matt Holden in that and and you go into halftime, you're down 32 to six, and you you really haven't had much to positive happened for you in that first half what are you saying in the in the locker room well you're saying we have time to turn it on here stave off uh, a running clock and maybe put a back-to-back -to -back scores together and make this a football game um if you're Israel, you're looking at the exact opposite get a score here on the first possession get that clock rolling and move on but wayne trace has the ability to put up points in bunches and points fast this game could go from very much out of reach into an actual football game you know, in a quarter, we could sure. have a fourth quarter that's very competitive. It's not out of the woods yet. Yeah, let's be honest with you. Last week at Defiance and Bath, you oh, and I were talking you, ten minutes to, to go in the football game. We said, you know what? One score away at the at the clips that at the clip that Defiance was scoring. Yep, that could have easily been a running clock. Right. Next thing you know, it's a one point football game. But Defiance has to block the extra point on a touchdown to win the game, and that's sure. with two minutes still left on the clock. So yeah. yeah, we know it can happen. We've seen it. You got weather playing factors here. You've got potential if you know. Ayersville goes out and fumbles early in this possession. That momentum could be just what Wayne Trace needs to go down the field, score, get right back into this football game. So we'll know early how the second half is going to look. That's and an onside, an onside kick. kick, and it's on the ground oh still. My, Who's going to have it? I think Trace got it. It was – now, it didn't go 10 yards initially, but it was touched by an Ayersville player. I think that's going to Trace. Yeah, it is. And Wayne Trace will come away with the football. And you're exactly right on what you just said. It was about seven to eight yards down the field. It was almost jumped on by a, an Ayersville player, and it popped out and pushed forward about another four to five yards. And there was Wayne Trace jerseys all over it. So right at midfield, right at the 50-yard line, Wayne Trace is going to get the football. We thought Ayersville was going to start the half. They catch a little bit of a break here. So obviously the ball has to travel 10 yards unless it's touched by yep, that a, goes out. A, the receiving team's uh, player, and that's what happened. Uh, I, I didn't see who came up to try and get that, but not able to corral it in. And Wayne Trace will have it first down and 10 at midfield here, and it'll be an end around that is Moorhead, and it's bottled wow. up by Ayersville. He'll be pushed backwards. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Yeah, just stuffed in the backfield. That's the second time they ran an, uh, ran an end around today. Uh, both times have been with limited success, so nice play there with the ability to stop the football. Lost a yard back to the 49. So that links in. I'll tell you what, what a great – <laughs> what a great play there by uh, Matt Holden and this uh, Wayne Trace uh, team. Yeah. You know going into the second half you've got to do something to keep Ayersville's offense off the field. No better way to turn it around right away with an onside kick. And it'll be second down and 11. They'll run an option to this near sideline. Antoine with it. And he's got a really tough couple of yards. He's going to be pushed out of bounds by Jacob Myler. Yeah, didn't have, a, didn't have much of an angle there. Was able to get the carry and get the ball back and get a little bit, a couple yards. Ran a long way to sure get three, to, three yards. So let's see what uh, Wayne Trace can do with it here on third down. They were not successful in that first half at converting. And i, I got to be honest with you here, you're Brett. You're four down territory you're, you're, already. I mean, you're down, <laughs> you're down 32 to six. You're across midfield right now sitting at, what, third and nine. 
you know, you're looking to pick up some yardage here and get yourself into a manageable fourth down, fourth down scenario. Two backs to the backfield. They'll fake the end around. It'll be the second man through, and it's Jordan Lotz with it. His first, I believe, his first carry of the night. Yeah, no touches so far for Jordan Lotz. Had a uh, couple of nice defensive plays in that first half, but he's going to get looks like maybe about three or four down to the 45-yard line. So it'll bring up fourth down and five for this Wayne Trace offense. Scoreboard says six, but I'm going to say five. Yeah, chain it's, gang's it's, telling me that it's a solid five yards here for this Wayne Trace offense. They're going to go for it here on fourth down early in the third quarter. And no doubt you have to here. You're on that side of the football field. You 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 got the onside kick to get momentum. You got to keep it going. Back to passes. Stoller. He's looking to the right. He's going to go across the middle and deep, and it'll be what a catch. picked up off of his back. What a catch, Hudson Myers with the first down reception all the way down to the 30-yard line, give him 15 yards, on and that's a back, huge conversion laying on his back on the turf. No, definitely was slid down right as the ball was starting to get there, but literally had landed on his backside and caught the football. So a huge conversion for Wayne Trace on fourth down. It'll be Antoine with it on the first down run. He's going to get a couple of hard-fought yards. And the Ayersville jerseys there quickly. It's just been tough all night, really, minus the big play for Tucker Antoine. He's hit the hole a couple times, but he's found a lot of blue there, a lot of Colombian blue jerseys um, in his way. Junior defensive tackle Hayden McConnell comes off the bottom of that pile, five foot six, but 220 pounds. McConnell's, there's McConnell's all over the field. They got one a junior, one a sophomore, one a freshman. They're all out here playing football. Second down and eight now at the 28-yard line for Wayne Trace. They're keeping it easy for us. They just got to get to the 20 now. Antoine will be hit and dropped. He's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. And great pursuit there by the... Holding. got to hold. So that's going to wipe off the run there, and it'll push. You got to believe they're going to take this penalty. Yeah, I would, I would think so. You would rather have the yardage here. So it'll be a hold against Wayne Trace. Are they going to take it? Yep, yeah, they're they going to take it. So. so it'll be a second down. They'll mark it off from the original spot, which was the 28-yard line. A little bit of confusion here from the officials on where to mark that from. but <laughs> You know, really... Overall, not a whole lot of penalties called tonight. The officials have done a good job. Teams have aided in that with running the football, but keeping this game moving. So it's Clocks been really nice. Nine and a half run rolling here in the third quarter. It's a second down at 18 now. As Stoller's back to pass, he'll have it complete down near the 30-yard line, and it'll be dropped immediately. That was Hudson Myers with the reception, and a nice job there by Brady Clark to wrap him up immediately. And well, he's going to get back. He's short of the original line. He'll be at the 31-yard line, so it'll be third down and 11. Third down. And big play here. Again, you're in two-down territory for Wayne Trace, so needing 10 and a half here, maybe 11 yards. You're going to try to get half of it, maybe a little bit more. Um, and you've got the quarterback to do it, so you're going to see a quarterback pass here and see what we can get accomplished. Timeout. And we're going to have a start. false start. Wow. Did not see that. Getting a little sloppy here. So that'll back him up. Third and 11 becomes third and 16. Yep. And an offense that struggled, I mean, outside of, uh, let's be honest, Brent, outside of a couple of big plays in this game here tonight, yeah. have not done a lot offensively with this football. They've been able to pass the ball in, for nearly 100 yards, but it's, it hasn't been a lot of back-to-backs, sure. a lot of on the same drive. It seems to be one here, one there. We obviously have said it multiple times, the big touchdown, 79-yard uh, touchdown run early in the game has really been their offense, but they're still in position right here. If you can get a score, you can start to get in this game. Stoller back to pass all kinds of time as Ayersville drops, and now they got pressure coming. Stoller's still running for his life, and he'll just throw it at Stoller kind of at the feet. He yep. was looking for Dylan Hildebrand. It'll fall incomplete, and I'll give, cover, give credit to the Ayersville secondary there, Brent. Uh, when a quarterback has that much time to throw, only a three-man rush, you know you've got great coverage downfield. Yeah, definitely do. Had plenty of time rolling out there to look for open receivers, just could not seem to find a spot. Pretty safe pass, veteran play there. Throw it at the feet of the one receiver who may have a little bit of room. Um, you're not at risk to turn the ball over making a pass like that. So good read. Put you down into a fourth and 15 situation. Nothing's coming easy here for Wayne Trace. So fourth down and 15, ball spotted at the 36-yard line of Ayersville. 
or excuse me, yeah, of Ayersville, sorry. Antoine in the backfield, they'll go quickly. Quick snap here, Stoller looking for it all. He'll come down this near sideline. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. It'll be in and out of the hands of the receiver, and a flag will come in. I think it was there is a flag on the play. Cole Moorhead he was looking for. It's going to be an incomplete pass, but I believe he's going to get pass interference. Ryan Mag on the coverage. Now it's third and 16, though. Is that an automatic? Looked like pretty good coverage on the play. There was a little bit of action going in. Great pass, ball into the end zone, led the receiver. Definitely something that's going to be called four out of five times. So, yeah, it's not an automatic first down in no. high school. I did not believe that. So it is fourth and 16. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Right. So it'll be a fourth down and one now for this Wayne Trace offense. Obviously much more manageable right. here. And that'll spot the ball all the way down to the 26-yard line. And check that, the 21-yard line. Yeah, this is, you know, it's one of those plays where you're right. Normally you look at that and say, all right, first time we caught our break, but you're not out of the woods yet if you're Wayne Trace. So let's see what they like to do here. They still have Antoine in the backfield. They could easily do that or even Stoller sure. with his feet. Yeah, I, I think you're going to look to see them run the football here. You might see a rollout. And they're going to go to the left side. Stoller is going to be hit and looks like he flipped the ball forward. I don't know if that's an eligible receiver. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a flag for probably an illegal forward pass or an illegal, or illegal touching. Touch. Yeah. Yeah. Nonetheless, it's gonna be Ayersville football wow. here. Wow. Fumble on the play brings up first down penalty. So they're gonna say that wasn't a penalty marker, Brent. That was the oh, orange the beanbag. Okay. It was a fumble. Corn husk. It was. I couldn't tell what it was. So a fumble Ayers there, and the drive will stall out day. here for Wayne Trace and. Uh, well, it's the third turnover of the night here for uh, the Raiders, and obviously the interception at going into halftime, not necessarily that big of a thing, but uh, first down at 10 now for Ayersville at their own 23-yard line, and it'll be right back to the ground they go. Can even on the run. Can even with a run there. We were, excuse me, I, and I, I apologize, I didn't read correctly in the pregame show. I said he needed 17 yards. Yeah. I was wrong. He needed 57 yards. You're right, yeah. Uh, did Torian Kneven to hit that 1,000-yard mark. and He's at 90 right now, so he's still in the clear. Yeah, we didn't mess that up too bad. We, we Again, we, I think we if you've watched any broadcast, you know we're not the best with math. <laughs> Numbers? What? Numbers. Anything educational? Listen, I've only got 10 fingers. Listen. I, mean, I, I know. My shoes are still on. It's too cold. <laughs> Second and six now, 27-yard line. Delano. On the end around, and, well, Wayne Trace just played this one extremely well this time. Yeah, they're all over that one. And leading the charge there for the Wayne Trace defense, number 50, who was not in the starting lineup. Caleb Mosier with the stop for... Wayne Trace, along with a couple of uh, mm -hmm. friends. Yeah, you're getting, getting a little bit mixed in of some of that second unit. and I mean, they've been beat up pretty good today in terms of, you know, being on the field pretty consistently. So probably trying to get some fresh blood in there and keep guys fresh. They're down at eight now, under seven minutes to go third quarter, and it will be a pass here from Fishpaul. Just a timing route down this right sideline. It'll be in and out of the hands of Ray Wolfram. It'll fall Fishball, incomplete. Falls incomplete. And for number 15, Ray Wolfram. I believe this will be it'll be the first, first three punt. and out. Yeah. And the first punt yeah. of the night coming for Ayersville as the rain starts to fall here at Craig McCord Field. Yeah, we're seeing some, some fans again. Some of them heading for the gates, heading for cover. I can see out there in front of us there's uh, rain spots on the ground. Yep. Luckily, we don't know that. You know, we're undercover <laughs> here. It'll be Abe Delano. He does it all. He's the punter. Standing back near his 10, and he'll just take his time. And what a boot. What a boot. And it will go all the way back near the 30-yard oh line. And what a huge punt there from Abe Delano. Wow. <laughs> He's standing at his 10, and that went all the way back near the Wayne Trace 30. So wind, wind, I will say wind helped wind, him a little yeah, bit, yeah. but that was there was a lot of leg involved there too. So Wayne Trace will take over at their own 20, or excuse me, 
Looks like about the 32 yard line. So nothing hurt there, you know, on that fumble. So you got one turnover right. they flipped that's, resu the that's resulted in points tonight. Yep. Trace flipped the field a little bit with field position, and obviously Ayers will not being able to get the first down, force the punt. So get the ball back. So a little bit of Ben Badot break. We've ran a few minutes off the clock here, and Wayne Trace is getting the football back for the second time tonight. In, in the, the second, second half. half. <laughs> Same time. You do this long enough, you finish each, finish each other's sandwich, uh, sentences. So. Time out on the field. All right, we got a timeout. Wayne Trace will take it. We'll take it with him. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. 6.40 to go, third quarter. Ayersville 32. Wayne Trace 6. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. We're back here at Craig McCord Field out of the timeout. Airs, or excuse me, Wayne Trace will come out here first down and 10. Kind of an odd spot, Brent, to, to burn a timeout. You're coming, yeah. you're coming out, of the, uh, out of the punt. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where. <laughs> you got some time to get it set up there. Yeah, let, you know, you hate to see him burn one there. But you don't take a chance. If you see something you don't like, you call the timeout. You got him, can't take him with you. And it'll be Antoine on first down. It'll be smoked and dropped Antoine immediately by Brady Clark. Clark. Tremendous tackle yes. there, closing tackle. Good Able name. to get a couple for Antoine as he is approaching 100 yards for the night. So you see, kind of wonder at what point does Wayne Trace maybe go a little bit of tempo here. They got some yep. ground to make up for sure. They haven't pushed it yet, but we know if they start they moving the ball, they can, they can turn it on quick. Second and eight at their 34-yard line, and it'll be the Lots, the second man through. He's got some steam going across out to the 40. Going to be shy of the first down. It'll be finally ripped down. Nice, strong run, and really try to keep chugging there. And Brady Clark with another tackle here, that senior linebacker. Yeah, he's uh, been all over the field tonight getting tackles. Definitely a leader for this Ayersville defense. There's no doubt. And now we'll see tempo here as they go quickly to the line on third and two. It'll be Antoine coming to the left, and he'll have the first down. Cuts it back across the right, across midfield, into the Ayersville territory at the 40, down near the 35-yard line. Wow, big run. Finally brought down, and another big run there from Tucker Antoine. And we've seen a couple of those here tonight when he gets space, yep. and he, he can, can make he a can couple of guys. quick. Makes a couple guys miss, and... And here's the tempo from uh, Wayne Trace as it's Antoine with the first down run. Not Tucker much Antoine going there. Again, by 19, and that's where Wayne Trace can really be dangerous, Brent. You mentioned it. When they get a little bit of momentum, they start yep. moving a little bit. They pick that tempo up a little, and then all of a sudden you're on your heels. Yeah, you get the defense back on their heels, and they haven't had to deal with that a whole lot tonight. So a little, little bit of a wow factor, shock factor going on as Ayersville's trying to make adjustments, and at the same time Trace is – Putting together a nice lengthy drive here, getting a couple runs going, a big time run. And they're moving the ball now inside the 40 on the Ayersville side of the field. Second and seven now, and it'll be Stoller with the option. It'll be a first carry here for Tyler Head. It's given to number 81, Tyler Head. Pushed out of bounds by number zero. A little different look there with the, the inside handoff uh, option than the coming out faking and pitching on, on the option. So. Definitely a little look there for Wayne Trace. Third and five now at the 33-yard line, and it'll be two backs in the backfield again as it'll be head and lots. Lots and head in the backfield. Clock under four, under five minutes to go. All kinds of pressure, and Stoller avoids the pressure. Now he's getting chased again at the 40. He's going to tuck it down, and he'll be hit out of bounds inside the 35. He got back have, maybe, yeah, oh, might have lost a yard there or got right to the line of scrimmage. It's really close. A lot of penetration from the Ayersville defensive line there, and it'll be a fourth down and about five yards to go here for uh, maybe six yards 
uh, for this Ayersville defense. Nice job there, pursuit of uh, yeah. Kyle Stoller. Well, you saw the front four for Ayersville fill the holes up there, and as Stoller had to roll out, was able to find the sidelines and able to get close back to the line of scrimmage. But tremendous defense, like you said, good penetration, good gap filling there for Ayersville on defense. Four and a half to go, third quarter. Stoller back to pass. Blitz coming off this near sideline. He'll float it across the middle, oh and my. it'll be caught inside the 10-yard line. And <laughs> that was Tucker Antoine out of the backfield. The big playmaker tonight almost almost falling down. Just tremendous, tremendous concentration to reel that one in. Inside the Stambol Jewelers red zone for the first time tonight. That's amazing. Their only other touchdown, only other trip was that 79-yard run. And it wasn't a play inside right. the red zone. It was a 79-yard run. Right. And Tucker Antoine with three big catches and on top of having over 100 yards. You know, he's sitting at about 160, 170 yards of total offense tonight. First and goal at the nine now. Four-minute mark as Lots will have it. He'll jump over a guy at the line of scrimmage. It'll go into the end zone. There it is. So Jordan Lots will have a touchdown run for the Raiders. And just like that, Brent. He heard... We're back to having a game so. to an extent. So getting that first score, um, you know, here in the second half has been it's they need it. They obviously need to get them in bunches. And, you know, everything's big now at this point. But you go down the field, you put a drive together, you know, for the first time tonight, sustain a lengthy drive, finish it off. Just strong performance by Wayne Trace so far here in the third quarter. Started with the onside kick and they kind of went on and rolled from there. So they'll go for two here, two backs in the backfield. Stoller looking to throw, and he'll go to the back of the end zone. It'll be caught for the two-point conversion. That is Dylan Hildebrand. And, well, Brent, uh, that's a much-needed yeah, score here for huge. Wayne Trace. It's huge. I mean, I don't know that we'll see see the onside kick variety this early, but, you know, we've seen they can do it, so everything's in play. And Wayne Trace has played a pretty good third quarter so far. They're looking going to kind of snowball some things together here and keep it going. Jordan Lotz with a Premier Bank touchdown, 3.56 to go. They cut the lead 32-14 back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Ayersville as the Wayne Trace Raiders, our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. It goes eight plays, 68 yards in two and a half minutes, capped off by Jordan Lott's nine yard Premier Bank touchdown run and the pass to uh, Dylan Hildebrand for the two point conversion. And uh, just like that, uh, the Wayne Trace Raiders have cut this lead 32 to 14 here with 356 to go third quarter. And uh, that's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. That was a much needed, not just touchdown, Brent. Yeah, but two point. A, I'm going to tell you, eight play drive. Yeah. Not the longest drive, two and a half minutes, a couple of big plays in there, yeah. but a much needed offensive series for this Wayne Trace Raiders offense. Jordan Lotz finishing it off with the touchdown at three carries on that drive. We've seen him mix in a few different uh, players touching the football here, and I think it's really just, just uh, getting some fresh blood in the game and getting guys out there who haven't been on the field nonstop tonight, and it's showing. You know, they got a little boost of energy, made a couple big plays. Um, Antoine had the great catch falling down. You know, they've made some great plays tonight and on that drive specifically. It'll be a high end over end kick. It'll fall in no man's oh land. My. This is tough, and Ayersville's going to fall wow. on it down at the 10 yard line. These little things. Ray yeah. Wolfram falls on it, and this is Brent, I'll tell you what, you, you, you get him kind of psyched out. You this get that onside kick coming out of halftime, little off and kilter. now you just. Booted over their head, no man back, yeah. and uh, Wolfram's going to fall on it back. They're going to say maybe at the 12, 13 yard line. So Ayers will take over, 3.56 to go, fourth quarter, and the Pilots have uh, got a long drive ahead of them at the 13. Yeah, and if you look at Ayersville, what they're thinking here is you just don't want to get too conservative here. You know if you play to not lose the game, you put yourself in that position. So they're going to stick to their bread and butter running the football, but they've got to get at least a couple first downs here. Well, Wayne Trace did a nice job of bottling that up on their first drive, and it'll be a first down run here for Kenevan, and he'll Kenevan on the run, by number have a solid gain 
out across the 15 to the 16 yard line. Can even just gets a ton of yards. Sorry, excuse me, 21 yard line, give him seven yards. It looks like an easy run. He might have got a couple in, you know, it's seven yards. It's just, it's good form running. Clock spinning three and a half to go third quarter. Here in week number nine of the high school football season, Josh Bush, Brent Routon, and the DC TV sports crew with you here from Craig McCord Field at Ayersville. Man in motion, it'll be the second man. It'll be Delano on the left side. He'll lower the shoulder and he'll go out near the 25. I think he's going to have enough for an Ayersville first down. So too. Looks like he needed three and got maybe four there. We'll spot the ball at the 24-yard line, so it's good enough for an Ayersville first down. And, you know, Brent, if you're the pilots here, you're not only looking to get down the field, but you're just going to churn a bunch of clock here. Yeah, you're going to see the run, and we've seen it all night, but you're going to see a mix of those two backs. We have seen Fishball carry the ball a couple times, so see if they start mixing in maybe Garrett McConnell. We've seen him carry the ball a few times this year, but they're going to keep with those big main hawks. And it will be second man through the hole, and he's just thrown to the ground. Can even a hard run there, and uh, Noah Bodai for Wayne Trace will spin him down and gained about two out to the 26-yard line. Not much there for uh, can even on that one. Nope, and you want positive yards. It's on first down there. Get something positive. Don't use lose yards, and he got two yards there. So, you know, we talk about staying on schedule, maybe staying ahead of schedule. That's what you need there is probably the minimum you're looking for is a couple yards. Well, Wayne Trace, no stranger to playing from behind. They... And scored all of their points in the win over Fairview last week in the second half. Oh, and um, we're going to have movement. I think it's going to be false start. We'll Flag see. No, nope, they're going to. This will be against Wayne Trace. Wow. Okay. It's, it's a big. So a second big and eight becomes second, second and three. three. That's big. That's math you and I can do. Yeah, we get most of those right. Yeah, there's a pen on you that it's second and three. So now at the 31 yard line. Clock under the two-minute mark, third quarter. And we can even with it. Left side, he's got room to go. 35-40, oh midfield, 45-40, foot race at the 30, and he'll be chopped down from the back. Nice pursuit there from Jude Stoller, but a huge run for the Pilots. So 29 and 24. Mark that down. 29 and 24, 53. <laughs> right? No, I know how to do math. It's 43. But 43. Okay. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, 29 and 24. That's 53. All right, Josh. <laughs> All right, first down run. <laughs> first down run for Ayersville, the 26. And he just keeps turning those legs. <laughs> Is it 53 or 4? No, it's 53. Okay. I'm playing with you. That's what I, was, that's, I, love, I love the back and forth and making you think. You're like, well, if you I could make you wait, keep second wait, guessing, you, I was having did, too much oh, fun. You, you did. I was like, no, wait a minute. That is 53. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> six, six yards on first down there for Ayersville. Final minute of our third quarter here from Craig McCord Field as the pilots are Churning another drive down the field here that started all the way back at their own 13-yard line. Now have a first, or excuse me, a second and fourth at 20 just at the edge of the red zone, and it'll be a first down for the Pilots as Kneven will take it inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone. Got to believe that might be the final play of the third quarter. They're not in any hurry to do anything here. No, I don't think so either. You've got it running. Yeah, you, you yeah, got to be. Yeah, you've got it running inside. Thirty seconds now. It was so. thirty-four when they wound it. Sure. They're, I think they're able. Oh no! Excuse me. Eighteen is no. They're about two seconds behind. They're two to three to, seconds. They're going to have to run a play here. Shout out to our cameraman John upstairs for getting that play clock in the shot for us. And a first down and ten in our Stamball Jewelers red zone. It'll be second man through. Not much going there for Touring Kenevan, and that'll bring us to the end of our third quarter. Pilots uh, on top here in control, 32 to 14. Fourth quarter next here on DC TV Sports.
Back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rott with you here, the DCTV sports crew. And we want to say a big shout out to everybody who makes this happen here. And it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that the people don't see. Alex and Jeff, Will, we got mm -hmm. Zeke here, we got uh, Tim, we got John. I mean, these guys uh, been out here since, uh, I don't know, 1.30, 2 o'clock this afternoon, getting everything set up and ready to go for us. We just kind of come in and talk. And yeah, as long as we don't have to do math. No, we're, we're bad at the math part of things and then understanding the rules and everything. But, yeah, um, it's definitely a, a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's Will did happen to come back here, and I, the environment changed really quick back here. So, I mean, so figure that out. So the pilots will have it here. Second down and nine in our Stamball Jewelers red zone at the 13-yard line. That tells me they can still get a first down, Brent. They can still get a first down. Would be at roughly the four-yard line there. I think. <laughs> Listen. We're dealing with single digits. We should be okay, right? Yeah. Take your <laughs> shoes off. <laughs> All right. It'll be a run to the left side for Keneve, and he's trying to stay on Ooh, his feet, and he'll yeah. fall forward the near the five-yard line. and yeah, Hit hard there, down. but uh, definitely got through and got the first down. And Wasn't Torin Keneven is still down on the field. He's probably that is, just tired. I mean, he's in pain. Yeah, he definitely is. Looked like hit pretty hard in the back. Fell forward. We'll see if we're looking at upper half. Timeout on the field for injured player. So let's uh, take a timeout here for the injury. 11.50 to go in the ball game. 32 to 14 Ayersville. We're back after this on DCTV Sports. As the Ayersville uh, injury timeout here for Torian Kniven and you know, Brent, a uh, major player in this uh, Ayersville squad. Not just, I mean, we talk about him offensively sure. a ton, but he, he's in that linebacker spot on defense, yeah. and uh, he's, a, he's a presence on both sides of the football here for this pilot squad. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you don't want to see anybody injured, uh, especially a, a key member of, of what you're trying to do here scheme-wise. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we, we know what he can do on both sides of the football. He's an athlete, extremely tough kid, and, uh, you know, a, a big hit there, and we'll see. We're hoping everything's all right there. It's Training staff out of the yeah, field. Yeah, they got a couple guys out there giving him a look-see, so hopefully he's all right. Um, he's played a great game tonight and obviously had a good season and, you know, is one of those key cogs for the Ayersville Pilots. Well, for uh, Wayne Trace, uh, they'll uh, go back home next Friday night. Uh, they'll have a Week 10 matchup with Paulding, who at last check was uh, struggling a little yeah. bit against Ayersville, or excuse me, against Antwerp tonight. Um, but that's a, a big matchup for them. Of course, we talked about it in the pregame, sitting at 17 in uh, – Region number 22, Division 6, Region 22. So every game important for Wayne Trace if they're looking yep. at postseason. Um, I, I was – Paulding is still – Yeah, it's it's a big one. 38 nothing Antwerp leading over Paulding in the battle there of Paulding County. Um, they did start off decent this year. The Panthers did, and playing in the GMC still being – I mean, they're not new anymore, but they still are sure. new. It still feels new a sure. little bit. So Back in the GMC. Yeah, you know. Well, for Ayersville, uh, next Friday they'll be back here at home uh, to close out the season against Fairview. And, uh, well, uh, obviously not going to be a ton of points there against no. uh, the Apaches, uh, kind of controlling their own destiny a little bit. Ninth in Division 7, Region 26. Yeah. Um, you know, top eight do get a home game. So, right. uh, obviously, you, you want to control what you can control, and yep. that's getting wins in week nine and week number ten. And you right. you kind of hope the, the teams around you help out a little bit with, with things that happen. But Pilots really kind of in, in control of the fact that they have a really good chance of being here at Craig McCord right. Field in week number 11. Yeah, tonight's game was huge. Um, it was, you know, Fairview's going to bring a little bit to the table in terms of points, but they're not going to boost you up a whole lot if you beat them next week. So this was your game tonight. You know, playing a team with four wins who you could steal a little bit of thunder, and sure. you get a little bit of a bump, and what you want to do is you have the games on your schedule. You have to play them, and you want to win them all. 
But when you look at the two games remaining for the Pilots, they looked at tonight and said, the tonight, if we want to play here in the first week of the playoffs, tonight is our night. We've got to go out there and play our best game. Well, let's, uh, let's continue to take a look at Torin Kniven out there on the uh, field. Let's uh, take another timeout here on our sports broadcast here from uh, Ayersville High School. 11.50 to go here on DC TV Sports. to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Rotten with you as uh, on well, the training staff till, still taking a look at uh, Torian Kniven here. And uh, uh, Brent, uh, hush has really fallen yeah. over this place. It, you can almost hear a, a, neat, a pin drop here at, at Craig McCord Field. And you, know, you look at uh, Torian Kniven as one of those guys that is a leader of your football team. And you don't want to see anybody go down. And, and uh, you know, just looking really to, to kind of close this football game out here tonight. And uh, Torian Kniven's had a a, a Mon huge monster night here. game. You talk about um, he needed, you know, we were back and forth on how many yards he didn't need. 57. He, 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 sitting on 159 right now, he clearly exceeded what he needed for yardage for 1,000 yards this year. Sure. But he's a key cog in that offense. He's a key player on that defense. And like you said, he's a leader of the team. And you don't want to ever see this, period. But, you know, for a player like that who's played phenomenal tonight, um, late in the ball game, it's, it's, it's one of those things you don't like to see. And you can definitely feel it in the atmosphere here throughout the crowd. So, um, thoughts and prayers go with that kid and hoping everything's going to be all right. Well, obviously they're going to take a, a good look at that. But uh, for for Ayersville here, uh, putting together a, a little bit of a drive here this second half, I think yeah. uh, you give credit to Wayne Trace. They've come out. They, they started the second half with uh, the onside kick, which uh, worked right. out for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, able to kind of stymie a little bit this uh, this Ayersville offense, get the ball back. They punch one in for a touchdown, and and uh, a, a team that really hadn't done much in the first half has really come on strong out of the locker room and, and playing very, very strong here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, kind of, I'd say surprised everybody with the uh, onside kick. You, you knew they could pull a couple rabbits out of their hat. Need, you know, sure. they had a, not a whole lot to lose there, but able to get the recovery. Didn't lead to points exactly there, but the the movement on the field in terms of field position that was caused by it um, has helped them go down the field and score a touchdown and kind of get back into this game. So Ayersville's countering right now as we roll into the fourth quarter with a lengthy drive and, you know, getting chunk yards on chunk plays. But it's definitely been a uh, a game where in the first half was just completely dominated by Ayersville. If you if you take the third quarter and that game was that entire third quarter type of ball was played in the first half, we'd sure. be looking at a much different scenario than 32-14 right now. Well, uh, we uh, have been kind of back and forth what we're planning to do next Friday night uh, yeah. for week number 10. It was, uh, for those of you who are uh, following our schedule through the season, it's one of those TBD games. And, right, always and, week 10 seems to be. And, and, you know, you get down to the end of the game, in the end of the season, you really want to make sure that uh, we want to make sure <laughs> from our standpoint that we're bringing a game to you that, that has, you know, something – it has a storyline. Sure. It. And so, uh, you know, we've got uh, Defiance on the road next Friday at, at Ottawa Glandorf. Probably not much of a meaningful right. game for Defiance. They're not going to get a ton of points there. Right. Um, and then you've got uh, Tenora going to be home at Hicksville uh, next Friday. The Ayersville back here next uh, Friday with Fairview again. Uh, you're not going to get a ton of points from those, right. but uh, we'll we'll kind of see. We'll be letting you know on, on our social media. If you haven't followed us, uh, DCTV and Defiance Community Television on on uh, Facebook, do so because we post everything up there, and and uh, we're, we're going to kind of look at maybe who needs to get a win for for a home yeah. game, or or who needs you know who who's going to need that win the most to to make it the most uh, meaningful for them in week number eleven, and so <laughs> you th you think you go back to you know not very long ago, you think about we're talking about teams that need that final win, get those couple extra points to slide in for a home game. That used to be to get into the playoffs, sure, and even prior to that, not very far. 
it was it wasn't even eight teams right. so yeah. you know it's expanded quite a bit over the years and in so many ways there's so many benefits to that schools get a chance to get in you know consistently well, you look at other, if you look at yeah. other sports yep you know let, let's just basketball. take basketball baseball softball yep. uh everybody gets in. everybody is right and and, and you got to understand uh, a football game is a little bit different of an animal. Yep. There's there's a reason why they only play once a week. The physical yep. toll that the, the, the that these kids endure, you know, playing uh, on a Friday night. Uh, obviously, not saying not taking anything away from basketball or base or any of those sports. Sure. Um, but you know, they're to say non-contact would be, um, you know, they're they're more of a non-contact sport, if you will. Right. Um, Although there, <laughs> I've seen some pretty, pretty heavy uh, basketball games sure. in my day too. But yeah. uh, you know the the OHSA, uh, I believe it was two years ago, went to the sixteen team format uh, last year, two years ago, two years ago. It, yeah, it was two years ago. It's, was it something? I mean, it feels like it was based around coming out of the COVID well, scenario. And, and Schedules were a little different. Not everybody played the same well, amount think, of games. I think they were planning that anyway, and yeah, then COVID really kind, threw, kind of COVID threw a curveball in that allowed it to you know make some sense. Um, and it does make a ton of sense. It's great for the schools. It's great for the kids. It's great for the players. So, you know, we, and, anytime and, you get and a I'll be honest with football, you, I, I wasn't. Uh, looking at it, okay, I'm not a I'm not a fan of diluting things like that um, because I've seen basketball games, sectional games, sure. and, and stuff, and and especially in basketball and, and even in some of the spring sports, where you get that low seed that has to, you get some pretty rough, yeah, you get some pretty rough lopsided scores sometimes in those early sectionals. Um, but looking back, even last year, uh, you know, at some of these teams, they were able to. We got some some low seeds. They were getting into playoffs. They're knocking off high seeds, right? You know, look at Defiance last year. I think they yep. were a 13 seed, and they Correct. beat the four, right, uh, in round number one. And, and it, it's who's healthy, who's playing the best, and those are the biggest things. And you could get teams that maybe you know we talked about Walpock a little earlier. Sure, they were struggled early, and we kind of thought, what kind of Walpock team are we dealing with in the WBL? They are on a roll, and they are blowing opponents out right sure. now. Sure, they're going to roll into the playoffs. You know, on that steep incline so and some teams you might start off eight no and hit hit the skids a little late and all of a sudden you're on the decline going in so you can get some things that come into play and you always you always get in all of the regions you get a good matchup where you're like you know that's a five and a 12 you know or what that's a six and an 11 but that's a really good game that's not a five and a 12 that's more like an eight nine yeah those teams are very evenly and two it's not a voted on thing i mean you're you're looking at a a point system and and the the point system's been in place for i don't even i don't know how long it's been since it's been forever it's been a points game but and for those of you who who aren't familiar with that uh if you've never been to Joe Itell's uh, website, yep. yeah. um, that guy is, a, in the, my opinion, uh, a genius. It's Actually, awesome. The, the OHSA has recognized it now because you can get links to his site off the OHSA yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. Uh, back back when he first started doing it, um, which was a long time ago. It was a long, long time um, ago. He actually uh, was able to figure out the math. Yep. And we've talked about our inability to do math. That's really complicated math yeah, because I mean, you get points for a win and then you get points based off of the people that you beat's points and the second and those level two and those level three tiebreaker points and all that stuff that right. go into it. Uh, he figured out the math. And yep. uh, so, you know, you're, you really have kind of some weight to – getting these teams in out of the playoffs and and you never know when you when you get to that point uh like you said if you're playing your best football and every coach will tell you you know no matter what your season goes like you need to be playing your best game whatever it is yes. football baseball basketball across the board uh you need to be playing at the top of your game when that postseason starts you see it at every level you do you see it at the high school level you you see it at the, you know we can go to the little league level if you want but you can look at the major league baseball right now sure literally the bottom four records have all advanced to the final four teams where the top have not so and you see it and if you see it at a level of the highest you know sport you know the highest levels it's going to happen here too if you're playing good ball and you're playing it at the right time, those couple losses can are happen. early in the year, they sting. They might make your road a little harder in the playoffs, but if you're playing right, some of it may not even matter. You know, you got teams that there's going to be – you're going to get a home game and it's going to be the difference in you pulling out that first game, which could spur a run, you know. Sure. All of a sudden you get neutral site next couple weeks and you get a couple good matchups and you've won three games now and you've advanced way further on where – you know, it was the home field advantage that allowed you to get that 2.1 point win 
to get going in the first round. So it's nice to get all the schools get, you know, with eight teams getting a home in each region, sure. eight teams getting well, a home and, game. And, and two, it used to be um, the first round was a home game, and then mm -hmm. you went to neutral sites yep. after that. Now oh, it's, yeah, a, that's true. it's a, it's a it double is. it's a double yeah. home game for, yes. your, for your, your top four. That's so correct. It is. Your yeah. top four are getting a double home game. So, um, you know, yeah, honestly, you know, for schools too. How cool I mean, is it for the kids and the students? Well, and, you know? and, and too, from an athletics uh, an, an athletic department side of things, if anybody that's been in any kind of sports administration knows, um, and, and you know, I, I help with the, the yeah. girls softball program, uh, it's not cheap. <laughs> sure. No, there's no <laughs> I, doubt. I, I mean, it is not cheap when it comes to the expenses of, of running any sports program at any level, whether it's the young kids or, you know, you talk about the millions and millions and millions of dollars that the right. NFL goes through. Sure. And, and uh, it, you know, some of that, obviously, people look at payroll and stuff sure. like that. But, you know, you, you get down to – uh, the paint that you put on the field, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you know, I was just talking it's about that. It's a factor. That. You know, I was yeah, talking it's to, something. Listen, I was telling somebody the other day because I just bought paint to stripe outfields, right? I used to pay about thirty-five, thirty-eight dollars mm -hmm. for a, a six k, a six bottle case of that. I got got some a couple of weeks ago. It was fifty six dollars. Oh, prices go up on things. <laughs> Inflation so, is a thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it, and things like that. It, it just costs. It costs a tremendous amount. Helmets, pads. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, you, you go through all that stuff, and, and and so these athletic departments with the ability to have some extra home games, you're getting some more funds infused into the school. Absolutely um, are. Before you go to those neutral sites, and that's another side of it that you know people don't necessarily always think about yeah and it's it's the the lack of travel you get the home game especially if you can get two. you know sure your fans are gonna be there and showing support we all know li life's hectic life's busy when you have to travel you know 60 miles maybe 80 miles maybe 150 miles to sure. go to a football game well, your fan base is gonna travel but only to a level is it gonna well, travel and, and you know my daughter being in band last year i can tell you um, that those opening round playoff games last yeah. year on the road, they chartered buses sure. because it was a that long of a trip. Uh, they're over in the Cleveland area, and uh, you're talking charter buses instead of school buses just because you've got that many kids going that far away. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, and, it, and it's it, it's it's just nice to have, you know. You get down to late in the season where we are now, and you can start to kind of paint the picture. You can't finish it. You can't complete it week nine. You get a good idea, sure. but still you have dominoes that are going to fall into place, and you're going to have an upset, and you're going to have a big shocking win. Well, and it's who can help who, yep. right? I mean, and, and sometimes <laughs> you're going to be looking at your opponents who you, you know, defiance with Napoleon week one, beat them. That's huge. What do they want? You know, they, they want, want them to, to win every game from that point forward <laughs> sure. because that's that your only big, helps yeah, them. If, if you're the Bulldogs, that's, that's your, your biggest only, rival. Yeah, and it's your right. only out of uh, out of league game. So when they beat them in week one and they go on to go on a run like they have lately and win games, that is helping Defiance sure. every win they put in the column. Well, let's take another time out here at Ayersville, Craig McCord Field, as uh, we are uh, awaiting some uh, training staff uh, again with an injury to Torin Kenevan, and uh, the training staff doing a great job out there making sure uh, that they're taking care of that young man. Let's take a time out here. We'll be back uh, hopefully to live action here in just a few minutes. You're watching High School Football on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. Josh Bush and Brent Routon with you as we've had a uh, a bit of a lengthy um, injury timeout here as uh, uh, Torin Kneven took a shot uh, trying to get into the end zone. And uh, yeah. they've been, uh, you know, obviously you want to take your time and get it right here. And, yeah. and, and uh, we've got 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the ball game. Ayersville is leading 32 to 14. And, yeah, well, a uh, uh, hush has really fallen over this crowd. And, you know, here's the point where you're with these coaches. We've been kind of in a lengthy delay here. you got to get these kids back in the in the mindset of you still got to go out and finish the last 
just under 12 minutes of this football game. And you see it on both sides, you know, looking on the sidelines of, of the players and the coaching staffs. Obviously with Ayersville, you know, that's that's one of their guys out there. That's one of their leaders. And But you even look at the Wayne Trey side and everybody's down on a knee and you can see on the look, looks of everybody's face, you know, they're very intently following what's going on. And with the length here, you're going to have to refocus, sure. and, and yeah, there's going to be that time coming pretty soon here. Yeah, I would imagine you're probably going to see uh, a couple-minute warm-up period here as uh, they do have Torin Kenevan up on the cart there and uh, the Ayersville team over to uh, – and about this, yeah. uh, you're Cap seeing a couple of – from Wayne Trace. You know, a couple of captains from the Wayne Trace uh, side of things coming over to wish him well, and – that's what you want to see. That's yeah, is. that is sportsmanship, right there. It is at its finest, and not it's just. Nice. You got and now you got the whole Wayne team Trace coming over. Team so coming over. so you know that's you respect. You play hard all year, but these are the guys you play. You play them in football. You play them in basketball. You play them in every other sport: track, cross sure. country, golf, everything. Um, you know, you know the kids and you know the players, and uh, you know you don't ever want to see anything like that. And you know, we got good training staff out here. And it's 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 good to see the reaction and them take their time. Um, it ain't warm. It's not warm tonight. Sure. It, it's certainly not the best weather in the world. But get it right. Um, get it right, and you know, take care of what we have to take care of. That kid's played great tonight. He's played phenomenal all year, and you hate seeing this. Um, but you know, it, it's going to be a moment where we're shortly going to be back to playing football, and you know, we're going to have to get everybody gonna reset. Reset mm. and. You know, kind of go from there. That was, um, you know, something you just yeah. don't like to see. But yeah. interesting to see. They're probably going to give a brief stretch yeah. period here for both of these teams. Obviously, right. you, you uh, in this cold of weather, it doesn't take <laughs> much to tighten up a little bit. No, so no. You, you'll have uh, we got about just under 12 minutes to go in the football game, and yeah, I mean they're going to give them you know three to five to seven minutes here, just to kind of stretch out. You know do a couple jump jacks, you know, get kind of loosened up, and you see all the players doing it now. Sure. And, and kind of get everybody to refocus. Um, puts a lot of things into perspective. Both teams have played great tonight at different times. I mean, we talked here in the second half with Wayne Trace. They've played really good football here in the sure. second half. And Ayers was kind of looking to put this thing away, and you get Torian can even carrying the ball inside the 10-yard line there, and you just hate to see it. Well, we'll get the uh, stretching here from the players and uh, kind of get things – Back on track uh, to finish this one out here. 11.50 to go here. It'll be a third down and four for Ayersville at the eight-yard line. At least that's what's on the scoreboard. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, about right. I believe that's going to be correct. Yeah. So um, 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the ball game uh, here. And, uh, and we, you know, Brent, we were talking at halftime. This was a, a spot where, for Wayne Trace where they could come out and if they couldn't, I mean, if the if the second half started the way the the first half went, right? Um, you know, this would be a running clock situation. But give credit to the to the Raiders. They come out here in this second half and they pull a little trickeration with yeah. the onside kick, and then they are able to put some things together. They get a, they get a score on the on the board, and they've cut this lead back a little bit and, and kept themselves in this football game. And I know from I, when they got the onside kick to start the second half, I just got that vibe from. Oh, we mentioned running clock, Josh. This is going to be a little bit like last week, isn't it? <laughs> and it uh, didn't quite work that way. But if you look at it, they've, you know, they've outscored. Wayne Trace has outscored Ayersville in the second half. So they've cut that gap down. I don't know if you're sitting in the locker room and, you know, the coaching staff is saying goal number one for the rest of this game is we don't want to see that running clock. Maybe it's part of it. You know, it's just on how you look at it. What you want to do is take this time that you have on the field and become better for next week, sure. become better for week 11 if you're getting to that point. So you want to work on things. This is time you can't well, have back. And as a coach, you know, sometimes you go, let's, you know, the, the first half, let's let's erase yeah, it. Put it away. Let's be, let's be realistic. That might be one of the, the – worst halves of football that Wayne Trace yeah. has played this year. And again, we haven't Tra Trace we've only seen him, yeah. we've only seen them a couple of times, but now it's like, okay, they're a really good football team. We're going to and now it's getting the victories, right? We're going to win the first series, we're going to win this, we're going to win that and then and and just kind of build from that. So Absolutely. Well, Ayers will have it now. It is a third down, excuse me, a third down and two. The ball sitting at the 8-yard line. Clock is rolling. So they'll spin the clock here. And uh, it'll be Delano with it, and he'll surge forward. He's going to be close to the goal line. He'll have a first down for Ayersville. He's going to be short of the goal line. It's going to be first and goal at the old one-yard line. 
So pilots need a yard here to punch this one in and see what they elect to do here. Clock spinning 11 and a half and rolling here in our third quarter, or excuse me, in our fourth quarter. And it'll be Delano again. He's going to be hit at the line. I don't think he got in. Looks like he's just short. Yeah, he got. looks like he fell right back to the line of scrimmage. Nice job there. Second down and goal. Caleb Mosier for Wayne Trey shot the gap and was able to keep Delano out of the end zone. And right here, you know, you get Wayne Trace that kind of backs against the wall here right down inside your one-yard line, but you get one stop. If you can get one here, you're right. starting to really apply and, pressure and, and to again, Ayersville. And again, you win first down, now yeah. let's win second down. Well, yep, you just go to the next play. Let's get to the next play. And they fumble, fumble the, snap, the snap. You get things like this happen. And it'll be a loss as Fishball will be hit and dropped for a loss. And, well, now, like I said, if you're in the locker room, you're in your your coaching staff for Wayne Trace. Let's let's win every down. Yep. And then let's win the series, and you know, and, and let's win the quarter. You know, and those little things there. You start making minor goals, and they turn into you build a couple minor goals and add them in together, and it becomes a pretty big goal. And all, you start accomplishing things, checking these off. You did right there. First and goal at the one. Stop them. Next play. Uh, fumble the snap a little bit, hit for a four-yard loss. Now we're at f uh, third and goal at the five-yard line. This is a different play than what they were looking at. You're likely going to have to possibly consider throwing the football here. Fishball will have two backs in the backfield with him. He is going to throw, and the receiver right fell down, got back up, and it will be caught for a touchdown as it was in the far side of the line, and it's Jacob Myler with the touchdown reception, a five-yard Pass to Myler. Tremendous. And you know, it's a pass premier and catch there. A Premier Bank touchdown. Give credit to Jacob yeah. Myler. He tripped and fell yeah, over there did. in the end zone, got back up and realized the ball was heading his way and uh, able to snag that one in there for the six points. I mean, Ayersville's been out on the field for a lot tonight. They've ran a lot of plays on offense. That's the sixth passing play today, you know. So. Even to Lucas Fishball, there hasn't been a lot of options to throw the football tonight. Delano on for the point after, oh and my. it'll be blocked. And you know, good for Ayersville. I mean, Ayersville there, you know, you went for two all night. That's obviously a little bit of their bread and butter. We know Abe Delano can kick. But um, at that point right there, you give it a shot. You, you know, you get a chance to run one of those and see what you can do. All right, well, uh, Ayersville tacks on a touchdown. It's now 38-14 to 14. back after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Ayersville High School. As we get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, it was a drive that went 13 plays, 87 yards, took about six minutes off the clock. It's uh, capped off by a uh, Premier Bank yeah, touchdown pass right from Lucas Fishpaul to uh, Jacob Myler. The point after was no good, and it is now 38-14 to 14 Ayersville with 9.53 to go in the ball game. And uh, our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary there. And uh, a nice drive, a lengthy drive there for yep. the Pilots. More importantly, come away with points. Yeah, um, you know, you're able to, to get a touchdown there. Didn't convert on the extra point, but able to get six. And, you know, you're sitting inside ten minutes, and you needed that. This first score of the second half there, you need to at least put something positive together, rebound, and see what you can do on defense. And, and especially coming off the injury to sure. Keneven, you want to finish that drive. Yeah, I mean, kind of get past that. It's going to be tough, um, but, you, you know, you kind of saw the first two plays with him getting stuffed at the line. You're like, you can feel it. You can feel it in the crowd, and you can feel it on the field. It, it is what it is, but they're able to punch that one in and at least maybe break the cycle a little bit. So Wayne Trace uh, behind the eight ball here. They'll have it first down and 10 at the 27-yard line. That's where this drive will start. We do know, obviously, they uh, still have uh, two timeouts. They burned one early in that yep. first in this uh, second half, but uh, – 946 in the way that they can clip big plays. I mean, we've seen a ton of big plays here from this offense. Yeah, it's um, that's been I mean, that's kind of what's got them down the field tonight. Um, maybe a little bit of tempo here from there from Wayne Trace. There's no doubt. 
Little bubble screen on first down. It'll be complete across the 30, 35, 40. It's a foot race across midfield. 40, He's 35, gone. 30, and it's going to be a touchdown for Cole Moorhead. One play. Wow. 73 so, yards. 12, Cole Moorhead for Unreal. Touchdown. And, well, Brent, we just mentioned it. Unreal. <laughs> At least one of us did. Big plays here tonight. Yeah. For Wayne Trace. And they've, I mean, that's where they've kind of found success on offense it's been those big plays and, and it has and when they've had success this year and hung in games they've been able to get five or six of those tonight they've had a couple but man they're starting to put them together here late and you know it's paying dividends this is the trace offense we've seen so far this year now they're going to line up for the point after kale winans the senior kicker jude stoller will hold and it's a low snap. He gets it down. Kick is on the way, and it is <laughs> good. So a point <laughs> after there for Wayne Trace, and now they answer the way uh, Ayersville score. Now 38 to 20. It's a Premier Bank touchdown pass of 73 yards from uh, Stoller to Moorhead, and uh, Wayne Trace cuts the lead, 38 to 20. Back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville as Josh Bush and uh, Brent Rotten with you here tonight on uh, DC TV Sports. Good to have you along. And wow, what a what a game this has uh, kind of turned into uh, here uh, late in this game, uh, Brent. It's uh, now 38 to 20. Let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. Not much there. One play, one pass, 73. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I think we had a penalty there. And Trace is going to line up and go for two now, it looks like. Excuse me. I, I missed all of that. I did as well. So the two-point try will fail. Yeah. Excuse me. Falls incomplete. As so we, yeah, as we went to commercial, that started version. sorting itself no out there on the field. So yeah, penalty Here's on Wayne Trace on the kick the negated 20. the extra point. And then when they came out, they just decided to go for two on that. All right, so I was writing notes down, <laughs> and I'm glad one of us was. Yeah, <laughs> you're kind of I tapping me on the shoulder here, like, yeah. hey. So let's get our <laughs> Mark Motes Ford <laughs> scoring drive summary. Hit it up again. One play, 15 seconds, 73 <laughs> yards. Uh, Kyle Stoller to. <laughs> to uh, K Cole Moorhead, 73 yards for a Premier Bank touchdown. Two-point conversion fails, 38-20. to 20. <laughs> That's our Mark Motzford scoring drive summary. And uh, it's it's one of those things. I'm looking at the score, and I'm like, okay, we're, we're in line. It's 18, so I think that's where we're supposed to be. Um, <laughs> you know, you think about this, though. It's 18 points with nine and a half minutes. Yeah. One more touchdown and two points. I mean, you know, you're 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 a three possession game regardless. But man, if you got one more, sure. It's you, if you're Ayersville, if you're Coach Mickey over there, you gotta you gotta hold on tight at that point. And you know, we know with the events that have unfolded, they're gonna they're gonna be playing a little bit. You know, you probably have a little bit of nerves there. So you're gonna need your seniors, your upperclassmen, to step up here and grab control of this game for the Pilots. I wouldn't be shocked if we see an onside kick here. They obviously can do it. We've seen it tonight. So I don't know if we're quite at that point yet, but. Well, final score in Salina, Bulldogs fall 17 to nothing. Eef. So, and you knew Salina was good. You knew it was going to be a tough one. Yeah, this was the one tonight. Like, you, you, you kind of look at it. In the WBL, you don't do a whole lot of looking ahead, but. You knew this one was going to be the tough game. and Well, at the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody knew that. No, right. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Three, four weeks in, you're going, wait a minute, I, I Salina. Think I, I think it wasn't until week six or seven we kind of defined how the teams were in the WBO. So Wayne Trace will boot it again yeah, over again, the head. They, they there's don't nobody put back. somebody deep. So. And Myler will have it inside the 10. He'll escape a defender, but he'll hit, be hit and dropped. And the pilots That's, are going to have a long road ahead of them here. It's almost as if Wayne Trace's doctrine, what they're going to do in the kicking game to how uh, Ayersville's aligning, and 
If Harrisville's going to line with nobody deep, uh, that tells you what they think about their potential for an onside kick because they know that. So well, absolutely. I mean, and and you you already saw it coming out of yeah, the halftime break. It. We saw him have the on, uh, convert on the onside kick and recover it for Wayne Trace, and then we saw him on the previous one. Um, Ayersville didn't put anybody back, and they kicked it over their head, and they did the same thing here. So they're kind of just deciding it looks like what they're going to do on offense or kicking the ball based off of how Ayersville's aligning to receive the kick. So it'll be first and ten, ball at the ten, maybe eleven yard line as the pilots will stick to the ground game. It's worked all night and it will continue to work here as it looks McConnell like run. McConnell will have his first carry. Yeah, he, he's been in a little bit on defense, but we haven't seen him too much on offense tonight till now. So obviously in for the injured Torn Kneven. And we've seen Garrett McConnell quite a bit um, in seeing Ayersville this year. And He's a freshman, and he's a <laughs> well, they, <laughs> tremendous back. And he yeah. and he's not built like a freshman. He's 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 a big kid, and he's a big strong kid. So it'll be a gain of six on first down. Pilots will line up here. Low snap. It's handled, and it'll be Delano with it. And it'll fall forward. Looks like he's going to have enough for a first down. Keeping that. Dave Delano on the run. Obviously, you want the clock to spin. Sure. Brings up third It'll, and one. Oh, got a long no, three there. Check that. It's a short one, but he was right near. I thought he was right at the stick, but it looks like he's about maybe a half yard short. Tackle by number 21. So the ball will sit right at the 20-yard line, and it's like they needed a yard. <laughs> I think that's right at the stick. <laughs> Two backs again in the backfield with fish ball here on First down, and it'll just be quarterback keeper. Fish Paul right up the gut. He's going to have the first down. The clock will stop momentarily to move the sticks, but it'll be good enough for an Ayersville first down. And we'll start the clock here, and we'll go under eight minutes to go in the ball game. First and ten at the 22-yard line. And well, if you're Ayersville here, you'd love to get down the field, but you don't necessarily want to be in any kind of hurry. No, you don't have to be here. You're going to look to run the clock out um, as best you can. Um, you, so right now you're looking at let's get positive yards, let's not lose yardage, and absolutely maintain possession of the football. They've already had a six-minute drive in the second half, yeah. and they'd love to get another one here. Look at a similar scenario here. Delano here will have it on first down, not much room to go. Swarmed hey, quickly by the Wayne Trace defense. It looks like he lost a yard on that. So got back near the line of scrimmage, but just a touch short. Tackle by number 78, Lou Stauffer. That brings up second and nine. Pilots, two timeouts. Wayne Trace, just one left here in the second half. Clock now spinning near the seven-minute mark. Time remaining in the ball game. Two backs in the backfield. Second down and nine, and Fishpaul just wait for that play clock to wind down. He'll give it to McConnell. He'll go across the 25, still churning out near the 30. He's going to be tough. short of the yeah, first down, but run. I'll tell you what, he got about eight tough yeah. yards there. Yeah, very tough run there for Garrett McConnell. Uh, we've, like I said, we've seen him earlier this year, and he's not, looks a, like, not a big kid, yeah, he, but he's, he's, strong. he's strong and physical. He's really strong, and I think he's he's a guy you're going to see here in Ayersville carrying the football for, you know, the next three years. The next three years, <laughs> and um, they're going to be very pleased if you're a Pilot fan. He uh, he's definitely looks good carrying the football, his heady running up, and he's strong. I mean, he is strong. You can see it. So he runs with a little bit of anger. So third and maybe about two yards here from the 30. And his little Delano will have it. He's got the first down and more, 35-40. It'll be wow. tripped up there in the second level. And a nice stop there for Wayne Trace. That was Connor Blankenship. And, uh, well, you can tell you what, you give Delano a, a head of steam and he'll make you pay for it in a hurry. Those, it's those big strides. It's, you know, he gets through the line of scrimmage and it just seems like he gets to the second level in two steps because he he's, he's tall and, and he's, uh, he's got really long strides. So gets 17 yards or so, maybe a little more than that there. And uh, it was able to move up and it seemed like doing about five steps. Play clock under 10 now and Fishpaul will stand there and wait and snaps it with five. It'll be McConnell with it. Penalty marker flies. See what we got here. Flag on the field. It's in the area of holding, Brett. 
Yeah. A little late, but we haven't seen a lot of penalty markers here no, tonight. No, it's, it's been actually really good in terms of allowing pace to develop. Face mask, foul. yeah. A a personal kind of foul face mask, so that that's one the 15-yard variety. Seemed to come in late in the play. Good. It's definitely in the neighborhood of holding, but, um, you know, you see that that flag come out pretty quick with holding, and it was interesting to see what that call was going to be. So 15-yarder, those are the ones. You don't like any penalties. You definitely don't like those 15-yarders. So that'll move the ball all the way down to the Wayne Trace 38-yard line. A big penalty there, and it, I mean, if nothing else here, if, yeah. if, if this drive stalls out, Ayersville has a chance now to really change field position here. Yeah. And, and if they have to, pin uh, Wayne Trace back deep. With, with the clock rolling down near five minutes, I think we're about at 5.15 as we stand right now, and Ayersville in no hurry with 38 yards to go. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's apparent they're doing – well, exactly still, what a smart football team would do here and just try to bleed every second they can off that clock. Still 15 on the play clock here. And as you can see, they're just kind of standing there yep. waiting. Waiting to see it get inside 10 and then line up and snap it probably around Play clock at five and they'll snap it here and they're going to throw it a little quick screen on the near sideline and it'll be Myler with it across the 30. He's having a game tonight. Yeah, he is. And pushed out of bounds. This ball's pass is complete to Jacob Myler. Took out a... <laughs> cameraman down there on the sideline. I don't think it was one of ours, but. <laughs> and that's another pilot. <laughs> nice pass play. Ca caught him a little bit off guard. I'll be honest, caught me a little bit off guard. And I definitely think it might have caught Wayne Trace a little bit off guard, able to pick up a solid, what, 14 yards there? Yeah. It'll be good enough for a pilot first down at the 29-yard line. Out of bounds. So the clock stops 446 in our ball game. Expect a run here, I would assume. I would think so. Wayne, Tr Wayne Trace jumped a little bit. No call. Fumbles, fumbles on the ground. It and is. it's a turnover. Oh, no, that's and we're off to the races that's here. It's Cole down. Moorhead. He's got it at the 50, 45, 40, 30, 20. And he'll go into the end zone. Look at this. A 70 yard. Look at this. Fumble, fumble return. And wow. Just like that. The Wayne Trace Raiders have made this an interesting yeah, ending. You don't see fumbles just sit on the turf like that one did. I mean, it was one, it was a, a heavy two count of it just sitting there. The ball fell out and it was one, two, and the ball is just laying on the turf. Moorhead picks it up with nobody around him. And as soon as he took two strides, he was gone. There, there was no way anybody was going to catch him. So. Just First this, turnover of the night for Ayersville, and it's a costly one here with 4.32 to go in the ballgame. It's a 12-point game. They're going to kick to get this thing down, try to get it down to 11. This is, this is very interesting. So it'll be Winans on for the point after. Snap high this time. It's down. Kick good. is up. Yeah, kick is good. We've seen him kick. He can Winans. kick. Point after is successful. So... Wayne Trace has, <laughs> wow, cut this lead down. 38-27, 4.32 4 to go in the ball game. We're back after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush, Brent Routon with you here tonight. Cole Moorhead picks up the fumble off the grass, and I didn't see exactly where he put it up, put, picked it up, but I'm going to say 70 yards. That's fumble. about spot on. I think it's somewhere around 70, 72. So, yeah, you're right there. Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. <laughs> One play, this a 70-yard uh, fumble recovery for a touchdown. The point after is good. It's a Premier Bank touchdown defensively yeah, off the this... turnover for Cole Moorhead. 38-27, and that's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, if you want to call it that. Uh, and, uh, well, Brent, we were talking, this is the second week in a row we've talked, and this was really, honestly, a lot closer to a running clock than what we had last sure, week. Sure, very much. And now we're down to an 11-point football game. And it's almost the exact same thing as we felt last week. I know uh, two completely, it's unrelated teams and all of that, but just uh, one team just absolutely dominates the first half. 
And then it really appears that Wayne Trace has, it's not absolutely dominated, but they have been the much better team in the second half. Let's see what Ayersville elects to do here. Are they going to set? I, I mean, you got to believe they're going to try to get somebody back in case they kick it over their head. Yeah, I, I've got to. And they're lining up for a big kick here, and it will be booted deep. They did it again. And now you're that at Ayersville. You're hoping it gets in the end zone, and it no, doesn't. It it's going to be picked up at the two. Oh my! And he goes out across the ten. That was Myler with it, Myler. and. Wow, what a what a big boot there for Wayne Trace. That's a huge, huge kick there if it's, you're the if you're the Wayne Trace Raiders. It's like, it's almost like you're feeling it with, with every play that everything that can go you know opposite of what Ayersville would want is happening. Um, but they've perfected that ability to kick it over the um, receivers on the kickoff and just pin them deep. I mean, we are one big play with four and a half minutes away from this thing. Getting extremely interesting. I mean, it, it's already there, but it's I'm, already interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of a, still a little bit in disbelief when he picked that ball up off the turf and started running. I said, "This is going to be a two possession game, like in five seconds." <laughs> well, Moorhead's one of those guys you'd like to have the football because yeah, he's, sure. he's a speedy guy. Incredibly anyway. quick. First down run here for the Pilots, on the run. and he'll be brought down out near the 15 yard Double line. Give him three yards. Clock continues to spin near the four-minute mark. Wayne Trace just one timeout here. Now, obviously, that early timeout that they burned yeah, coming out of the big. punt. Uh, you'd like to have that one back, I'm sure, but, I mean, you can't can't take it back now. No, there's nothing you could do. You still have the ability to stop them. I mean, with the clock running, um, if you don't allow a first down, you're going to be getting the ball back with a timeout and some sizable clock left. Still a two-possession game, 38-27. 11 points is the lead as a second down run here. McConnell on the run. Looks like McConnell. That was two McConnell runs in a row. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, the dynamics changed a little bit. Um, but Garrett McConnell in the game um, for sure has, uh, you know, changed up a little bit what they're doing here. He's fresh legs, only the fourth carry, so. Five yards there on second down. Third and two, very manageable here for Ayersville. And if you, if you look at the clock and the timeout situation, Ayersville needs two first downs. It depends on how many plays they're able to do that, so it's a variable still. But, you know, well, the key if they're is able to they, get two they, to three more first downs, this game's probably over. Well, they need to get a situation where they can get Wayne Trace to burn that final timeout. Yep. And it'll be a oh. run. It's going to be close. Oh. Oh. Well, he's still surging. Well, the, Wayne I, Trace I, has Trace the ball. Trace has the football. Are they going to say he was down? They're going to say he's down, but he's Delano shy of the run. first down. He got a yard, gave uh, Abe Delano with a yard. Are you going to get a measurement? And no, nope. we have a timeout. Wayne Trace will burn their, fir their uh, third and final timeout. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. 38 27, 241 to go in the ball game. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field here at Ayersville High School. 2.41 to go in the ballgame. 38-27 is the uh, Pilots' lead. And this got real interesting now with a fourth down and one at their own 21-yard line. And now we'll uh, see what uh, the Pilots elect to do here coming out of the Wayne Trace timeout. That's their third and final timeout. And it'll be... Uh, where, yeah, where you're at on the field here, you would not go for this. However... It's all on how you feel about a fourth down one yard play versus how you feel about punting the football. So the, we'll the, see. The, the key here, oh, they're going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, if you feel good about one play, you do it. Or maybe they're going to try and get them to jump off sides. They do have the timeouts to do that as well with three timeouts left. I'm going to say that's what you're going to see. No snap. Yep. They're going to punt. And, it, you know, we're, we're, it's, it's a Kristen Stanton attorney law timeout. Uh, Ayersville burns their first of the second half. But, Brent, we'll keep it here. Uh, you know, in this situation, you know, I kind of talking in the commercial there. Number one, if you go for it and you don't get it, you're giving now Wayne Trace, who has no timeouts. They have to get their, They have to get two scores. So if you give it them the ball at the 21-yard line or the 20-yard line, let's say, um, that's going to give them the ability to score quickly. 
yeah. with an opportunity to, to maybe get an onside kick or, or you, they'll have to go to the onside. You're out of, you're out of timeout. So you got to go for the onside kick. Uh, you're, I think you punt here. Well, what you do is this. With, a first down here is going to uh, theoretically end the game, if not take it inside 30 seconds before they give the ball back. If you punt the football, you do put the football back into their hands and give them the opportunity to go sure. out and win the game. So if you feel good about one play for one yard, you take the chance to do it yourself and never give them the ball back. It's touchy. Six of one, half dozen of the other. They've played the second half pretty conservatively. I would expect that to continue, but and well, there you go, Delano's out there. The so, lined but up if for you punt. feel great about one play, that is the time to use it. Raiders are going to bring the house here. It looks like they are all lined up, and they're going to rush after him, and they almost get to they it. They did. That's a great punt again. And it will be fair caught, right. just shy of midfield. So. Jude Stoller will haul that one in at about the 47, 48 yard line. Wayne Trace will have a little over 50 yards to go here with two minutes and 35 seconds to go in the ball game. And you, you, know, you know, you punt there. That's the football move. I don't like if I'm Coach Mickey giving the ball to Kyle Stoller. I just don't. I see. You know, I look at it this way though. Now you give. Now they have to go 40, 52 yards. And, They've got two and a half minutes, and. They all, have to score again with no All of no these outs. things have to happen. It just seems that they have in well, the second half. <laughs> let's be honest with you. The, the second half has not gone how any no. of us, I don't think anyone here at Craig McCord Field would tell you it went. Okay. Stoller back to pass on first down, and he'll be complete across the 45. And Stoller's Nope, they're going to say he was brought oh, down inbounds. Oh, oh. That's big. That's so important. It, it's huge. That was complete to Hudson Myers. Clock rolls near the two-minute mark. Officials slow to get the ball down. Got clock stop at 2:11. Coach Mickey call timeout. And it's a and it's an Ayersville timeout. Okay. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney law timeout. We'll take it with him. 2:11 to go in the ball game. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Josh Bush, Brett Rotten with you. DC TV Sports here in week number nine of the high school football season. 2-11 to go in the ball game, and this has become a ball game here in the second <laughs> half. 38-27. to Wayne Trace with the football, no timeouts, and they're going to need to score quickly and get the ball back in a hurry. They'll check the sideline for the play. They got a second down and two at the 44 of Ayersville. Back to pass is Stoller. He'll go to the right side. It's complete to Myers again. He'll get out of bounds at the 35-ish yard line. It'll be good enough for a Raiders first down. See where they put They're going to put it right at the 35, so nine yards for Hudson Myers. And He's been a big target here in the second half. Uh, five catches so far in this game. When you look at the other guys they've got, and Moorhead yeah, and Hedlebrand and Miller. And it's been pretty cool. Jude, Jude Stoller, no catches yet tonight. He's usually a big playmaker. And they're going to go for it here, and it'll be thrown out of bounds. Uh, probably a heads-up play there by yeah. Kyle Stoller. Not a lot going. Ayersville obviously back in solid coverage. They're dropping uh, extra defensive backs and just trying to keep things in front of them. And, and you could tell there, uh, rolled out, look, didn't see anything, just chucked it, and that's burn it out of bounds and go to the next play. Took a few seconds off, but. Live to, live to see another see, down. Live to see another down. Two minutes to go. Second and 10, 35-yard line. Trips to his left. He's looking that way. Back to pass. All kinds of time. Pressure coming from Leo Barraza. He tosses it up. It'll be caught oh at the 20-yard line, and that is Cole Moorhead, the junior receiver. It'll be caught. Wow. A huge inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone at the 16-yard line. 19 yards on the reception, and Stoller will roll to his right. He's got time. He's still rolling, he's still rolling, he's still looking. It'll pass, is complete at the 10-yard line. Hudson Myers. Hudson Myers with another catch for the Raiders. Gain of four, more importantly, Brent, 
stops out of bounds. The clock. Yeah, stops the clock. I mean, this is this is this is huge. This is Wayne Trace, and this is impressive. We know what this offense can do, and we're seeing it. <laughs> Inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone here tonight again. They hadn't made it in the red zone in the first half. They've been down here a few times now in the second half. Across the middle oh my. and almost almost picked off. It ricocheted off the receiver and <laughs> saw saw a hand get in there and mitten and pop it up. And you know what happens when that happens? I mean, tip that drill. hangs in the air, tip drill. Every, you could, if you're defenders, you can hit receivers and anybody can catch that football. And if it hangs in the air, the longer it hangs, the, the worse it is for the offensive team. So third down and six now at the 10-yard line for the Wayne Trace Raiders. And it will be an inside give to, uh, excuse me, to, okay. to Tucker Antoine. Now they're going to get the stop of the clock yeah, the, for, the first, first for the first down. Like and it'll be at the two. Yards. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a play. That, first that's and an goal. interesting call. And they'll give it to, you know, are they going to say... They wave in the playoff. Timeout. Timeout of Ayersville. Yeah, so Andrew, Timeout. Coach Mickey had one left, and I think right there is your time to burn it. So Ayersville burns their third and final timeout. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. Minute 24 to go. Air, and uh, Wayne Trace knocking on the door here. Trail by 11. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Love it. Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Rain is really starting to pound down here now, and a great shot by uh, that is. our cameraman there to get that one. And minute 24 to go here in the ball game. First down and goal for Wayne Trace. Caught everybody off guard this with that is, inside run to Tucker. Yeah, it did. I couldn't even remember his name because <laughs> sure, it's been a minute. I mean, they saw that. They saw the. They knew they could get the first down there, and it gave them a chance to to look a little different. I'm surprised they maybe aren't thinking about kicking. So they'll fake the inside give. No, they'll give it to Antoine. He's going to be hit and dropped for a loss. They've got to get to the line quickly. That's everybody's a out of, huge play. Just everybody's a out of timeouts. Play. Nobody's in a hurry to spot this football. And a loss of two, second and four. Stole her back to pass. He'll throw to the right side. It'll touchdown. be caught. And it's a Premier Bank touchdown. A four-yard touchdown catch for Hudson Myers. And unbelievable. To number seven, Hudson Meyer for the touchdown. Wow, and uh, this is unbelievable. 38 to 33, down by five. Unreal. Probably going to go for two here. That gives You're you the opportunity yeah, to, tie you have it, to tie it with the field goal. Minute one to go in the ball game. This is a big play. I mean, I guess they all are at this point, but. It's, the onside kick's going to be the big play. They're lining up. Blitz coming from the far sideline, and uh, it'll be waved off here. Hope we had a false start against Wayne Trace. So that is that's that hurts. That yep. really hurts. On a two point conversion, backing you up five yards. So we're at the what seven? Yep. We talked pregame. We talked early, kind of about surprised that the trace offense was having so many issues because we know how potent they can be and well then, just think if they could have converted a couple things in that first half they just flipped the script in the second half and have looked like that team that we've seen at times so here it is a two-point conversion down by five and they're looking left side he's going to throw it into the corner it'll be caught got it two-point conversion is good and it's hauled in Close by cole pass. moorhead and just like that, we have a three-point ball game. Who would have ever thought we would be here? We still have over a minute to go in this game. 101. But a minute one to go. 38-35 Ayersville. Final minute after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Ayersville. Let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary for Wayne Trace. It's not uh, eight plays, 52 yards in a minute 30. It's a <laughs> Premier Bank touchdown pass from uh, Stoller to Myers Moorhead on the reception for the two-point conversion. And it's a 38-35 ball game here with a minute one to go. Our Mark Mutz Ford scoring drive summary. Brent, you said it before. It's probably going to come down to this onside yeah. kick. And, uh, my friend, you're not wrong. We have a lot of rain. I mean, it's, it's pretty steady rain here. And this is it because you have the feeling with the momentum and everything that's been going on on the field in the second half, if Wayne Trace recovers this onside kick, I don't know if Harris was going to stop them. And... It's obvious. If Harrisville recovers the onside kick, they take ball games over. a knee or two and yeah. we're done. But this is your game. And if you would have told me we'd have a minute to go in this game, it'd be a one possession game. And an onside kick was going to determine this game coming out of halftime. I'd have said you're crazy. So Wayne Trace will line up to, and they're going to, they're going to, just a low kick. And it'll be recovered by Myler. And kind of surprised we didn't see an onside kick there. So Ayersville will come out here, 58 seconds to go in the ball game, and all thing, all, I mean, all intents and purposes, that's your ball game right there, folks. I, 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 I don't understand. I, I'm not sure what the thinking is there, but unless Ayersville. they unless they thought they could beat them down to the ball. So Ayersville, I mean, maybe they're hoping for a take a knee. There you go. So they kneel on this Lucas one. They'll have to do it again. Yeah, they'll kneel one more time, but that should do it. What a football game. Nonetheless. <laughs> what a football game. Wow, what a game. finish to this one. And uh, clock will spin under. Once it gets under 40 seconds, they can take another knee here, and that's what they're lining up to do. Clock at 30 seconds, and Fishpaw will take a knee on it, and that should that should do it here tonight. Well, it was a tale of two halves here tonight, Brent. The Ayersville Pilots hang on, and they win it here tonight by a final score of 38 to 35. Our post-game show is next. And the Wayne Trace Raiders, 35. We want to thank both teams for... Welcome back to Craig McCord Field. Final score tonight to Ayersville a winner, 38 to 35. Welcome to our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show. I'm Josh Bush alongside Brent Routen. And, uh, well, what a crazy, crazy finish it was yeah. to this game. And uh, we kind of said it going in, Brent, a tale of two halves. Uh, dominated in the first half by Ayersville. And the <laughs> second half uh, really uh, essentially dominated here by by Wayne Trace. It's ju just nuts really to think about it from the standpoint of being a football fan, being a fan of sports. Um, it, it's been – it was a great game, and it was literally Ayersville completely dominated in the first half running the football. You know, uh, you're looking at it, and Wayne Trace only scored one time in the third quarter. It was that fourth quarter again. And uh, just poured it on in the fourth, and it's it's like the clock got him. If, if if this game had three to four minutes left in it, I'm fairly convinced with all the momentum, Wayne Trace is going to finish this game off and come sure. back and win it. Let's take a look at the scoring here tonight. Uh, there was plenty of it. Uh, it opened up with a an Abe Delano nine yard touchdown run uh, with uh, Torin Kadeven on the two point conversion uh, right at the end of the first quarter. It was eight to nothing Ayersville. Second quarter, Abe Delano again twelve yards out uh, and a uh, Kadeven two-point conversion 16 to 0 Ayersville with eight and a half to go in that uh, second quarter Wayne Trace would strike quickly uh, Tucker Antoine 79 yards the two-point conversion failed it was 16 to 6 Ayersville 
And then uh, Ayersville, not done, though. Torrey no. Knieven, 11-yard touchdown run at the 441 mark. Delano with the two-point conversion, 24-6. to And then one more time, uh, Knieven from seven yards out. Delano, the two-point conversion, 32-6. to That's where we would be at halftime. Second half, it's where uh, the Wayne Trace Raiders started to find their groove a little bit on offense. Uh, Jordan Lotz, a nine-yard touchdown run. Hildebrand, uh, the two-point conversion failed. It was 32-14. to Oh, no, excuse me, the two-point conversion was good to 32-14. Uh, to 14. And that was our lone score in the third quarter. Ayersville opened up the fourth quarter with uh, Lucas Fishball fighting Jacob Myler on a five-yard touchdown pass. The point after was no good. It stayed 38-14. to 14. And then all Wayne Trace after that fourth quarter was theirs. <laughs> 9-46, Stoller to Moorhead, 73-yard touchdown pass. The two-point failed. 38 to 20, and then it was uh, Caleb Moorhead again, or excuse me, Cole Moorhead again, picked up that fumble, ram, rumbled, bumbled, stumbled, didn't yes, really rumble, did. bumble, stumble, he just outran everybody, sure 70 did. yards, point after was good, 38-27, and then with a minute one to go, Caleb Stoller, or excuse me, Kyle Stoller yeah. found uh, uh, Hudson Myers on a four-yard touchdown pass, and then the two-point conversion was good to Cole Moorhead, 38-35, we thought we'd see an onside kick. We didn't see an onside kick, uh, and that's where the ball game ends. Final score, 38-35. Yeah, just taken aback by what we saw there um, in the entire second half and still just wondering what was going on at the end of the football game there with no onside kick. They know better than we do. They know what their team is sure. doing. We did see them recover an onside kick tonight, so yeah. it's kind of just ironic. We kind of thought that we might see one there. But phenomenal second half of football, made it a football game, and what a joy to call and joy to be a part of. Our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show rolls on next. Final score again tonight, Ayersville, your winner, 38-35. More to come on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Ayersville. Pilots a winner tonight, 38-35. to 35, And they, uh, well, a uh, <laughs> down-to-the-wire game here. Let's uh, take a look at some final stats numbers here tonight. Brent, uh, let's start with the Pilots. Uh, looking at Ayersville, it was the rushing attack, the ground attack that we saw in the first half. Uh, story continued in the second half, um, just a little less dominant in the second half, but Torian Kniven, it was the two-headed monster of Delano Kniven running the football. Torian Kniven tonight, 18 carries, 159 yards, found the end zone two times, a couple touchdowns. Again, went over 1,000 yards for the night or for the season, so um, great job there. Abe Delano, 21 carries, 167 yards. Looking at that, those two guys combined tonight for over 320 yards. Awesome. Delano added uh, two scores as well, multiple two-point conversions for both of them. Garrett McConnell got some late action on five carries for 23 yards. And that was really the nuts and bolts of the offense for the uh, uh, Pilots. They did throw the ball a little bit. Um, Lucas Fishpaw uh, had 24 total passing yards, completing four passes on seven attempts. Two catches for Ray Wolfram for five yards. Two catches for Jacob Myler for 19 yards, one of them resulting in a touchdown. Overall, tremendous performance. It was that ground game that really drove the Ayersville offense tonight. Look at uh, Wayne Trace here tonight. Uh, an offense, Brent, when we talked at halftime, uh, was not doing much. No. Uh, it, but came out in the second half and, and really was able to put some things together, took advantage of a couple opportunities uh, there in that second half as well. Yeah, it was uh, Tucker Antoine in the first half with a big uh, rushing touchdown. That was the huge play. Um, and then the second half, it was seemingly everybody for Wayne Trace that could get involved in it. So Tucker Antoine running the ball tonight, 15 carries, 128 yards. Bulk of that coming on the 79-yard touchdown run. Had a couple other big plays as well. Kyle Stoller, we did not see effectiveness on the ground as he ran the ball four times tonight. Um, with sacks included for a total of one yard. Um, not big threat there. Cole Moore had added two carries, one yard. Jordan Lott scored a touchdown late in the second half there, added just three carries, but did find 19 yards and that aforementioned score. Uh, passing the football, it, it's, uh, it's the fun part of, of the Trace offense, and it was ugly in the first half, but 14 of 25 for Kyle Stoller tonight, 209 yards. Bulk of that in the second half. He had two touchdown passes, one interception. One of those touchdown passes is, we'll talk about here in a second. Hudson Myers was an absolute threat tonight and a guy that you've seen get more and more involved as the season has went along. Seven catches, 64 yards, found a touchdown. 
Tucker Antoine, the running back, um, added three catches for 63 yards. Cole Moorhead, four catches tonight for 99 yards, so just one shy. These are unofficial stats. Hopefully somebody pops that up and gets him a 100-yard night. But the 73-yard touchdown pass was a big play in that fourth quarter. So And sure. a 70-yard yeah, fumble I mean, recovery for touchdown. Yeah, and he had them touchdown. pretty darn close together. It was like he got a lot of yards there in about a, a – eight to ten minutes span so sure. four catches 99 yards possibly four catches 100 yards try to help the kid out that's a nice game brady miller added one catch for seven yards it was really myers moorhead a little bit of antoine in the first half and not much in the second half just just an, an odd game but a fun game and sure. the numbers are fun to look at when you get that you start to dive into them and say okay makes a little bit of sense i think your final numbers here tonight in a Ayersville win, 38-35. Uh, Our Brunswick Eye and, and uh, Contact Lennon Center postgame show rolls on next here from Ayersville on DC TV Sports. Sports are uh, Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show as uh, the uh, uh, Ayersville Pilots here will improve to 7-2 and two on the season, 5-1 and one in the Green Meadows Conference uh, with the win here tonight. Wayne Trace uh, falls with the loss 4-5, and five, now 3-3 three and three in the Green Meadows Conference as we look for a couple of candidates for our Steichman Automotive Group Player of the Game. They'll be uh, getting a, a pizza from Padroni's. Um, let's start. Uh, let's start on the uh, Wayne Trace side here tonight. Uh, Cole, Cole Moorhead, I tell you what. Four, there's four guys and one really sticks out. There's Tucker Antoine, really for his first half with the rushing yards, a couple big catches. Um, Kyle Stoller's probably going to be in the mix every single game. He's just a focal point of that offense. Hudson Myers, kind of jumping out as a surprise. Cole Moorhead, as we talked. You want to talk about dynamic player who made an enormous difference on offense and defense tonight? Just a phenomenal game. Sure. Uh, for Ayersville, uh, I mean, a bunch of guys you can start calling geez. off here for, for the Pilots. I mean, it, you, you look deep down, and you got to point to those two running backs. Abe Delano, 167 yards. Torian Knieven, 159 yards. Both found the end zone multiple times. Lucas Fishball controlled the game, played well tonight. Touchdown catch for Jacob Myler. Um, defensively, homecoming king uh, Brady Clark can be in the mix a little bit yeah. as well as he was all over the football tonight, winning the crown, getting some tackles. Um, those two backs, amazing tonight. So, you know, in, in my estimation, you, you go to a winner in these types of scenarios. And as much as Cole Moorhead, I think, was the dominant factor in this football game. Sure. It's those two backs. Yep. So we, where do we go? <laughs> yeah, you like to put me on the spot and make it difficult. <laughs> because I, I think, you honestly, you can give it to either one of those guys. Yeah, you uh, can. I mean, you can flip a you, coin. You look, I mean, you, I, you look at it. Delano one's got great. the... One's got the uh, touchdown. The other's got the two point. Yeah, and, and the, the yeah, other gets the touchdown. I mean, the other gets the two point. They they alternate we carries. We, we, you know that's a, that's a two person thing. Delano added a little bit of an element on the extra point. Can even uh, cross the thousand yard threshold tonight and happen to get injured. Um, if 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 it's me, if it's me, I I probably go with can even. All right, uh, Torin Kadeven, our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game here tonight. We'll set him up with a uh, pizza from Padroni's Pizza. Congratulations. Thousand-yard season is uh, it's, huge it's awesome. for everybody. You, you don't get those every year, and it's just nice to you see. You don't. And uh, also, we want to just send some well wishes his way because uh, that was uh, tough to watch, the, yeah. the injury there earlier in, in the night. So. You can tell it had some effects on Ayersville. It's not what caused the uh, Trace to come back. That was all on, on the Raiders side in the second half. But, um, you know, Hats off to Ayersville tonight, and especially to Torian Knieven. Great game played, and we hope everything's going to go well on that end. Both teams looking for uh, week number 11. For uh, Wayne Trace, they fall to 4-5, and 3-3 three and three in the Green Meadows Conference. Next week, they'll be home against Paulding. For Ayersville, 7-2 and two now, 5-1 and one in the Green Meadows Conference. A home game next yeah. Friday night here at Craig McCord Field against Fairview. Uh, so... Uh, they kind of it's big. get walk into next week, and you you got to play what you got to play. So yeah, obviously amen. the loss here tonight uh, really hurts Wayne Trace. Sure. So they were already kind of on the outside looking in. So they're going to need they're going to probably need a lot of help. They need some help big time. 
So I want to say a big thanks to uh, Rafael Manriquez and the entire staff here at Ayersville, our entire production team here at DCTV Sports. We appreciate all their hard work as well. For Brent Routon, this is Josh Bush saying goodnight from uh, Ayersville High School tonight where the Pilots are a winner by a final score of 38-35. to 35. You've been watching high school football on DCTV Sports. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you.